Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting of January 17, 2018, Memorial Town Hall. Call the meeting to order. It's 530. Uh, We'll get right to it. Under announcements, um, just a reminder, uh, there will be a special town meeting on January 24th at 7 p.m. That's next Wednesday in the cafeteria at Smith Academy. The Board of Selectmen Finance Committee appreciate your attendance at this very important meeting to allow the town to close fiscal year 2017 and set a tax rate for fiscal year 2018. And there will be more discussion on that a little later in the meeting, but I just wanted to uh, remind people via the announcements. Uh, also, uh, we've been notified by the Hatfield Library that Hatfield residents can use their library card to stream movies through the Canopy website, and that's Canopy, K-A-N-O-P-Y. Uh, all they need to do is set up an account at Canopy, with a K, dot com, but they will need a valid library card number. Uh, if anyone needs help or has questions, they can email the library director at Hatfield Public Library at gmail.com. Um, Ed, or as far as announcements go, Ed, do you have any? No. Anything? Cindy, did you have anything? Marlene, was there anything that I might have uh, skipped over or missed as far as announcements go? None. No? no? Okay. No. All right. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Uh, is there anybody here for the public forum portion? Chris? Can you hear me okay, Joe? Go for that, Chairman. <coughs> <coughs> Do the usual, state your name and all that. Please. Uh, Chris Smith, uh, 17 Prospect Street. Um, I have a question on the agenda, which I know was amended, uh, regarding the executive session. Uh, reason 1 was replaced with Reason 5. And uh, for those of folks who don't have an immediate uh, access to executive session reasons, Reason five is to investigate charges of criminal m misconduct or to consider the filing of criminal, criminal c complaints. Now, my question here, usually when you go into executive session, you state the reason, but not very often, as open meeting law suggests, that you mm, kind of give a reason why you couldn't do it in open session. Um, I was just wondering, uh, just from, this is kind of serious, uh, what department is affected by this, and is there more than one individual uh, that is um, potentially facing a criminal misconduct? Well, the, the whole intent of going to executive session and having a conversation is to um, find out some of those things that you alluded to, but we, we're not in a position to actually state anything more than that at this point. That's why it's an executive session. You don't have it in open session. But you can identify a department. You can di identify. But I'm not willing yeah. to. They don't need to do that. When they, they will convene an executive session, they will take the vote. They have the reasons in their packet. Right. And they will read that, that clause under the statute for executive session. Uh, you know, the open meeting handbook kind of suggest that you should give more of a reason than that. Um, I'm just They have the suggesting. statute in front of them in their packet. Okay. Well, so much for transparency, right? Well, thanks. Sorry you feel that way, Chris. Well. All right. Anybody else here for public forum? Okay. So um, it's only 25 of, but I, uh, if you would, so do you want to get, what, pardon me? I still didn't hear you. I'm do you sorry. want to do your minutes? Um, oh, yeah, we could do that. Um, we do have some minutes to approve. Um, some going back uh, to you know a couple months. There's two sets of minutes. We've got June 9th, excuse me, June 19th, 2017, and December 3rd, which by the way says. 18 on the top of the minutes, Marlene, but it should be 17. Uh, actually, that is supposed to be, that should be January 3rd. Ah, okay. I noticed Something that. With, yep, that's yeah, okay. So we'll correct the month on that. So the minutes are from uh, June 19th, 2017, and January 3rd, 2018. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes as presented? 
Could you do them separately? Sure, absolutely. Yep, sure. Yes. So is there a motion to approve the June 19th, 2017 minutes? I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. Is there any further discussion? No, I wasn't there. Okay. Uh, Ed, did you have any further discussion on that? No. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Um, make a motion to approve the January 3rd, 2018 uh, Board of Selectmen minutes. Is there a second? Second. Yep. Okay. Uh, so the motion's been made and seconded. Um, any further discussion? No. No. Okay. Um, the only correction, which is probably no big deal, was on the second. <coughs> <laughs> Excuse me, on the second page, Marlene, and it's under the um, cleaning contract. And mm -hmm. right, right in the middle, it says Auditor Dawson, which I think that's Jenny. So, so it's the assessor's office, really. Okay. I mean, I just you and know, I marked that. Is everybody a chairperson on those? Uh, yeah, I saw that too. No, okay. no, actually, Dar it's on Daryl the is the chairperson. Right, and it's it's on the next page too. Yeah. So it, it just, um, just for what it's worth, clarification of everybody every was a chairperson. Yeah. Oh, the right. Members of the They're not. Yeah. Were and there's a chairperson people. on the next page yeah. too. Okay. In one of the paragraphs. Yeah. Actually, I had that over okay. on the. Yeah. Just to keep them clean. Okay. Was there anything? Uh, any other comments or no. corrections? All right. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So those were approved as amended. Yes. Okay. All right, uh, under posted business, uh, we've got topic number one. Um, we've got a, f a couple of, a few members from the um, 350th Anniversary Steering Committee who've been working for a few months now and have been putting um, various activities together, picking out dates and doing everything that you need to do to coordinate this effort. So um, thank you for being here. Uh, I don't know exactly, um, you're just gonna give an overview at this point of where we stand. And of course, this is the uh, 2020 is Hatfield's big 350th birthday celebration. So uh, why don't I turn it over? Uh, Bob, you're gonna be the yeah, spokesperson. I'll, I'll start it off and yeah, we'll go. Um, if you would. So I know you, you have copies of this in front of you, but just kind of a quick overview um, for anyone at home. Uh, as Brian mentioned, 2020 will be the 350th anniversary. So we've started, we're a couple months in. Uh, the committee, uh, Lori Banis and Ed Lesko are the co-chairs. Uh, and then uh, Diana Zinal, Anna Holhut, Mike Pashek, Cher Nicholas, and myself uh, as the, uh, the additional members on that. And we've started to split up the responsibilities amongst the group with uh, with different subcommittees that'll be working on the activities as we move along over the course of the next three years. Um, we are going to uh, announce a couple of the items tonight and then we'll have more information kind of coming along. Cool. Uh, the first that will be coming out, uh, information will be coming out on February 1st, is uh, we're going to be having a logo contest for designing the 350th anniversary logo. So that will be uh, released, all the information will be released on February 1st of about six weeks um, for submissions to be able to come in and then uh, the due date will be March 16th um, from there we'll work our way through the process with the ultimate goal of having the finalists available to be voted on um, hopefully the night of town meeting and the night of uh, or the day of annual elections somewhere here in, in town hall lobby so that all townspeople will be able to decide on what the logo will be so look for more information coming out on that, and we'll certainly get it posted all over town and on the website. Um, the other major event that we want to announce as far as dates is that the festivities will be kicked off on New Year's Eve uh, 2020. We have uh, secured the log cabin for a, uh, a gala ball that will be held on December 31st, 2019, leading into 2020 to start the year off. Um, and then throughout the year, uh, we'll have numerous events with historical uh, background, uh, some agricultural events. We'll have the parade is scheduled for the summer. We'll get some more information on the date once that's firmed up with a few of the, uh, the groups. Um, looking at some summer festivities with uh, different um, sports and, and, and different types of uh, historical activities with that. Uh, planning a block dance in the fall and then looking to uh, wrap up the year with Luminarium and a fireworks display in December of 2020. So it's going to be a full year 
a lot of different events and uh, we'll have more information coming out on that. Um, we are seeking volunteers. As I mentioned, we have the, uh, the subcommittee, or uh, sorry, the steering committee and, and the subcommittees are starting to be established. We are seeking volunteers uh, and any ideas that anyone has. So uh, we have set up, um, just, just recently set up the start of uh, a website that will be dedicated towards everything for the event or for the festivities, which is uh, www.hatfield350.com. Nice and easy. And we'll get that to John and, and get that posted up there. So certainly anyone who's interested right now, it's, it's pretty basic, but that'll be developed. But anyone who's interested in, in helping out um, can email planning at hatfield350.com or can certainly contact any of the members or, or the town hall. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Ed to discuss a couple more of the financial aspects, and we'll go from there. Okay. Right. Uh, what you. I'd like to just go over is uh, for the people at home, in case they're interested in volunteering for some of the committees, uh, Lori Banis, she's uh, actually co-chair in, in Pavilion Block Dance Committee, okay? Uh, so if somebody's interested in doing um, part of that, uh, they can contact her or contact the website or the town hall here. Um, the uh, Bob Betzel, he's in charge of marketing, fundraising. Um, Diana Zinel, she's uh, uh, in charge of the Gala Ball Committee, uh, along with Anna Hoha. So those two are working... Uh, on that, and also Anna is working on the fundraising committee. Okay, and Michael Poshik is probably going to need the most help here. He's uh, with the parade committee, and that's going to be a very important event. Um, it's going to take a lot of manpower, um, a lot of subcommittees to pull this thing together. So, um, if anybody's interested in helping him um, or the the committee itself, uh, the parade committee, contact the town hall or him or or uh, on the website here. Also, Shara Nicholas, she's uh, in, in the uh, historical committee. Uh, she's basically the liaison between the H historical society and the town and any events that are going on with the um, historical events throughout the year. Um, like Bob said, there's many, many summer events. Um, the money part, <coughs> the, uh, what we're looking for uh, within the next three years, uh, there will be an article on town meeting uh, in the annual town meeting for $25,000 uh, for three years. That's a total of $75,000. We're asking the town to appropriate over a three-year period. And um, what with that is we may not need the money if we get enough um, uh, money from uh, donations and stuff like that, but we have to cover our bases just in case. Okay. And also, uh, we'll be looking for an article on town meeting uh, that's going to have a revolving fund for the monies to be placed <coughs> into the donations. And that's about it. So, do you have anything else, Sheriff? Uh, the Hatfield Historical Society right now is planning uh, five events throughout that year, starting in October through, um, well, actually, yes, it's going to be um, March through October and also up to uh, two to three um, exhibits in the museum. So we don't have it defined yet exactly what we'll be doing, but that should be talked about soon in terms of our meetings at the Society, which we have um, starting in March, um, uh, April, and May of this year. Great. Um, the fire, fire department is also talking about a fireman's muster at that time, too. Uh, there's also talk about a tractor pull, uh, which might come into play. So um, those of um, those groups of people that want to put on an, an interesting show for, uh, for the 350th, uh, please get in touch with us and uh, get them on the list. And uh, we can figure out when the dates and so on and so forth so they don't clash with what we're doing. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Did um, Cindy, do you have any? No, I've been comments, to most or, of the meetings. Yeah. So. Ed, did you have any? I, I want to thank you for taking on this because it's a lot of work, and I and I hope everybody in town participates in some way. So, uh, the words out to all the clubs and organizations and groups to uh, participate in whichever way you can, and contact you guys to uh, see what they can do. And I also understand. I want the town to know that the money you're asking for is actually less than what it's cost other towns to run these events. So. You know, you're not asking for a lot. You're just asking f just to cover your bases. So, we're we're anticipating about a two hundred thousand dollar program here for that year. 
okay, with, with the way it looks right now. Um, so with, with any luck, uh, with a lot of luck, we'll have enough donations to cover it all and, and we can return it. We won't have to touch that money from the town. Uh, I'd also like to thank all of you uh, folks to, for your support and uh, understanding and also attending the meetings so you know what's going on here. We really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I know it is thank nice. We've, we've been in, I think it's, we've had three meetings so far and I know all three of you have been there as well as Marlene. So uh, it's, it's good, to have, good to have all your thoughts and input and look forward to that It's a big forward. deal. It's exciting. It really is. It's a big deal. Yeah, I, and I, I, I think um, r right off the bat for me, I, I think it's just such a great idea to make it a whole year, not, mm -hmm. not just one, one big event. I mean, multiple events. I, I love the New Year's Eve kickoff. I love it ending with Luminarium and everything in between. Um, and so I, I do hope that the residents, whether, you know, if, if you have a passion for the, the, his, the history of Hatfield, um, you know, let, let Cher know if you're interested in parades, let Mike know in any other aspects of it. You don't have to be involved in every single thing, but, you know, find something that, that, really, uh, that really interests you. And that is not a lot of money. It sounds like a lot of money maybe to some people. Um, having been involved with parades through the years uh, in other in other community, uh, you know it, it's expensive. Um, and by the way, most bands um, want to be compensated for participating. You know, and many people don't realize that they they think they just show up um, out of the kindness of their heart. And and some do, probably for this special event. But um, depending on on the music that comes those bands need to be compensated. So I, I know there's a marketing effort going on as well. Um, so I totally agree with Ed that, uh, and, and doing it over a number of years is, is a wise idea too. So I, I, I agree uh, with Cindy and Ed. I think you guys are off to a great start and thank you very much for, for Thanks. this undertaking. With, thank uh, you. Just like to say also, we have meetings posted uh, just mm -hmm. about every month. Um, so uh, you know, please come to our meetings if you're interested. Uh, in something or get us the word and uh, um, it's okay to just show up at our meeting. They're open meetings that we uh, have every once a month and uh, uh, we'll go from there. We, we welcome any suggestions or input yeah. or, uh, or anything like that. So uh. Yes, and also the Hatfield Historical Society has monthly meetings. We have one coming up in March, April, and May. So if people are interested in the historical aspect of this 350th, please come. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love you to, you know, have these discussions with us. And, of course, you know, we're really open to what people in the town would like to have for the 350th yeah. in terms of the historical perspective. And I'd like to add, if a business in town wants to sponsor <laughs> a band yeah. or an event, contact you. That would be a great way to show off your business and your support for this town. Yeah, we, we will be starting that, uh, that conversation very soon. <laughs> Good plug, Ed. Good plug. All right. Um, thank you very much. Did you, was there anything else you wanted to? Uh... I'm good. Uh, okay. just the, the point here was to get it out to the people, yeah. let them know what we're doing. Um, we have a full agenda. Um, on every month we talk about uh, the items that we're going to be doing and people on subcommittees, we're going to be looking for that next uh, as part of the agenda. Um, so I hope to get uh, a lot of volunteers to put this on. We're going to need you, quite a few people to, uh, to put, put the whole uh, process together here. Yeah. So, thank you. Awesome. Great. Thank you very thank you. much. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Uh, under post of business, topic number two was a change of manager for the, uh, the Hatfield market. So um, I would ask the, the manager, or, uh, <coughs> it's that, that's still not here? Okay. So maybe you expect them to be coming shortly. Oh, it's six? Okay. We're going a little quick. All right. All right. Thanks. Um, so we'll hold off on the manager change till the, the new manager is present. Um, topic number three is, is Steve. Yep. Oh, okay, so t topic number three is Steve McDonough from Amerisco. Did I say that right? Yep, Amerisco. Amerisco, thank yep. you. Uh, which is regarding a solar project proposal on Mountain Road. So you have, uh, Steve's going to give us an overview. Uh, yeah, I'll take that, please. I, I do. I think. Yeah, I have the larger uh, version. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay. What you sent me, we have yeah. copies yeah. of those. Yeah. Thank you. So maybe you can give us a, uh, you know, have a seat and, and just an overview of what the proposal is and, and what you're thinking. And 
Yeah, yeah. sure. And thank you for your time. Thank you for uh, putting me on the agenda today. So I'm Steve McDonough. I live in Northampton, but work for Amoresco. We're based in Framingham, Massachusetts. We've done a lot of projects out here in the western part of the state. We just uh, finished up the Northampton landfill project. We've done projects in Pittsfield, uh, Stockbridge, Lenox, um, Sturbridge, you know, among many that we've done, um, you know, in the past. And the site that I'm looking at, we started with a conversation um, <clears throat> with Marlene. She connected me to the, the assessor's office, and I started to look at town-owned land from Hatfield. Um, and started to look at this well field that is north of RK Miles on Route 5 and 10. Uh, the closest junction is Linseed Road, I believe. It's Linseed Road. And um, so a couple months ago, I met Anthony from the DPW up there just to get an overview of the property. And, and uh, so it's roughly a 10 to, 10 to 12 acre property, the open portion of it. And it's really a prime property for a solo project development. It can't. I'm not sure if it can necessarily be used for anything else, um, you know, for the town of Hatfield. So it's an opportunity for extra revenue, extra taxes. Anthony did say they looked at, you know, potential farm in there, but with the pesticides, obviously that's not going to work for a well field. Um, so this is something that we've done in the past, and something that other towns have looked at in the past, as far as utilizing land that can't really be used for anything else to help generate some extra revenue for the town and potentially be an off-taker of the solar project. So it's roughly, it could be roughly about a two megawatt project. Um, and, you know, looking at, you know, some of the considerations that we want to look at when we're looking at, at property is, um, you know, topography and slope. You know, it's a nice flat area, wide open, no problems there. Um, abutters, it's off the road. There is a house or two that, you know, may be impacted visually. From a project there, um, but with some screening, I think that could be you know alleviated pretty pretty quickly. Um, you know, the current use being a well field, that's a common reuse of, of uh, town-owned property uh, for solar projects. And um, and then as far as you know, obviously there's a lot of permitting and and uh, use limitations that need to be considered. But you know, DP there are limitations when it comes to using well fields for solar, but it's really permeability. So as long as we have the panels uh, spread out to a certain aspect, uh, that's generally not a concern at all. Um, obviously zoning, I, I checked, uh, I forget who it was from the town, uh, I checked with, they didn't see any zoning concerns related to a project there. Uh, there are underground utilities that Anthony uh, told me where they're located, but that wouldn't impact the project as long as we had a setback, I believe, of 15 feet on either side. So it's still, that's where, when you look at the, the overview of the project, you can see where there, there's a, a dividing line down the middle. So that's where the utilities exist um, at the site. And then um, interconnection, there's three-phase power right there at the property. The one thing that is probably, you know, we wouldn't be able to determine until we get further down the, the road is what interconnection costs would be. Uh, because there was a big project up in Hatfield uh, being completed, it's like a four megawatt project. So that's going to be feeding into the same feeder line to the substation. So that's starting to get at capacity. So we're not, we, wouldn't, we don't really know what those interconnection costs would be until you know, further down um, the process of this. Um, but again, we're not too concerned about the permitting issues. Obviously, we want to abide by uh, Hatfield's um, you know, zoning and as well as uh, solar bylaws. But after a quick review, I didn't see any major concerns and limitations there. And um, as far as, um, you know, the opportunity goes for Hatfield, most often there's a few different ways that um, Hatfield could look at a property like this. You know, they may want to own the unit, which most municipalities don't want to do that at that stage. You know, we have a bunch of financing options that we can provide. Um, to let municipalities own these, you know, solar units, usually through an energy performance contract. Uh, but most often, <coughs> the developer will own the unit and sell the power to the town. Or the most common way and the simplest way is that the town leases the land to a project developer. We pay Hatfield a certain, um, a certain annual lease rate, 
and plus um, taxes related to uh, the project as well. Um, and, you know, this all goes to the point of um, this has to go out to RFP. You know, obviously, we would love to be able to do it a deal just one on one, but that's not how it works in Massachusetts. So uh, we understand that process. <coughs> And so most often, you know, people are going through the procurement process of 30B for a land lease deal. Um, and we have, you know, many examples of towns that we've done that with in the past. And, and um, so that's basically the proposal uh, for Hatfield. And, and um, you know, would like your consideration. I appreciate the time. And, and um, that's all I have to say. And just want to open it up for questions for you. Thanks, Steve. Um, Cindy, did you have any questions to... Um, right now? Or? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to go first? or? I'm first? just trying to understand. This is something you're proposing for the town of Hatfield, or is this being proposed? This is being proposed for the town of Hatfield. Town, it's, it's Hatfield town owned land, so it's being proposed. So the revenue would go to the town of Hatfield. So we would lease the land, is the most common approach, and then pay taxes uh, you know, based on the project itself. And potentially, Hatfield could be a, a, a off-taker of the power, you know, if that made sense for Hatfield, at a reduced rate, obviously. That's the only question I had. Okay. Okay. Um, so this is over. This is over. You called it a well <coughs> that, that feeds to our reservoir. Is that correct, or is this this is the? Because it's very difficult. The picture is pretty black. I can't tell exactly where you are. Yeah. No. It's, um, um, so it's about so a half mile north of RK Miles. It's a it's a wide open field. And uh, so basically, there's a well, there's some um, okay, so it, it draws groundwater up. Right, the town well then? Yes. Right. Oh, yes, okay. town well. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, not, it's not near the reservoir, or it wouldn't impact Right, the but still it'd be the, yeah, okay, because it's, it's not the only, well, it's yeah, the we other well. The, yeah. the no, I'm familiar with it. There, yeah, and, I've been back there, okay. And, um, um, yeah, I guess my, my concern is that it is over a well, you know, mm -hmm. that would be my big concern. Um, the water being very precious, and Hatfield has very good water. Yeah. Um, we've just spent a lot of money on the Omasta well, you know, to make sure that's protected. And um, my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm not um, very knowledgeable about solar power, but um, there is hazardous materials in those panels, correct? Well, they don't leach out of the panels. I mean, they, they upon yeah. disposal. It has to be handled as haz hazmat, though, right? No, no, right. not the panels. When they're disposed of? Excuse me? When they're disposed of, don't they have to be handled as hazmat? Um, there's considerations, but there's not really hazardous materials that would leach out <coughs> as far as... Well, if they were uh, vandalized or anything like that, you know, that would be my concern. Okay. Le leaching, well, can, in, leaching into there and... I can and, provide um, some more information on that. Yeah, but how much, how much would it dry, dry out the property there? Because I know, it, you know, I've seen them before where it's killed everything underneath them. Yeah, yeah. And is that going to do anything with the water? I mean, well, like, yeah, the DEP I mean, has guidelines as far know. as... Um, having separation between the panels. Mm -hmm. And they're considered permeable surfaces because you know the rain hits and essentially flows right off the panel onto the ground. Mm -hmm. And with the vegetation there, um, you know, it's perfect vegetation for you know, well field, obviously. So um, it's not like, and we would have to take special considerations in order to not disturb the land. And that's all part of you know, the DEP requirements for building a solar project on a well field. So the, the, that would all be, you know, part of the Do the conservation and everything yeah. like that. So DP would be heavily okay. involved in a project like this to ensure that there wasn't. <coughs> Just one more, um, and this is going to sound really dumb, but I don't know what you mean. But on page two, it says you have a hundred percent project success rate. What, what, what does that mean? That means when we contract with you know municipalities, mm -hmm. we have a hundred percent. We finish the projects because a lot of there's a lot of developers out there that. You know, don't necessarily have the financial backing as a company like Amoresco, so they say they can do these projects, and they get to the point where like, oh, we don't have investors to support because you know some of these projects cost you know five, ten million dollars to develop, um, and they don't necessarily have the financial backing that a company like Amoresco has. So that means you're, that's the successful is it finishing the project itself? Yeah, once it's, it's contracted, about. that okay. we actually you know get these interconnected. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Any questions? For I, don't have I, I just had one question. Do you, sure. So, Steve, do you um, have a normal lease agreement as far as number of years that you use? Is, is it pretty standard for each community that you've been in? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, you know, Twenty years is the typical twenty lease period, and there's obviously 
decommissioning built into yeah. that. So um, we would be responsible for the decommissioning of the field and it would be brought back to its uh, normal state, you know, once the project is completed. And there's options to extend the lease for, you know, five and then ten years beyond as well. And uh, But if it's something that you'd want uh, information on what a standard lease agreement looks like, I could send that to you. You could also, um, you know, send in the information on um, your concerns and hazards related to having a, a solar project on a, on a well field yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think, think I think, I'm sorry, I was just going to say, I think that would be important to have yeah. um, that information. Okay. Question? Sure, Chris. If the town wants them to take them out after 20 years, you come back and take them out? Yep, it's all built, built into the Part of agreement. The commission. And the fence and everything around them? Yep. And who pays, us to, pays to dispose of it? Well, that's us. It is, okay. Yep, we have a for everything okay. related to that. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Do you have any other questions for Steve right now? All right. So, Steve, thank you very much for the overview. Uh, to your point, you know, it's something that uh, you know we'll, we'll have to discuss if it's something we want to move forward with uh, from, from a town work? perspective. You know, obviously, you have, you have to sit down and have a discussion about how right. does the process work. <clears throat> well, I think that's that's kind of it. I mean, I, I think you are probably the first um, vendor who's shown an interest in in that property. So. Um, all right. Well, thank you for your time. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. And, and then uh, whatever you send, you, you know, feel. Free, I'm sure you've already been in contact. You can just send it to Marlene, and then she can disseminate it to, to us. Okay. If you would. All right. Excellent. Okay. All right. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. <coughs> All right. All set. All right. Um, next on the posted agenda, we have the Hatfield Market is looking to do a change of manager. If, would you? Gentlemen, mind just taking a seat up front and intru introduce yourselves. Um, so this would need a vote uh, of the Board of Selectmen, if approved, to um, approve the application for a change of manager to Atif Mian. Did I say, yep. it? Did I say it right? I'm Atif Mian. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, for the Hatfield Market on School Street. So um, was there any particular questions? Or no, I just, I'm going to have to abstain from your neighbor, so I have nothing uh, to do with this. <laughs> I better not vote, so. Okay. <laughs> Did you have any particular no. questions or, you know, so it's just change of manager and that's kind of, uh, that's kind of it. We made you come here and, and go through all this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you have anything, Marlene, to, uh, to No, add all the paperwork is in order and um, I don't see any, any issues. Problems. Okay. Uh, and Ed, you're you're going to abstain because you live across I'll be the street. So, okay, so I'll make. But, a but they're a good store. I'm going to probably. Oh yeah, I, say that. I agree. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'll make the motion um, to uh, approve the application for a change of manager to Atif Mian for Naxog uh, Incorporated, which is doing business at the Hatfield Market on School Street. Is there a second to that? <coughs> the motion made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And one abstention, Marlene. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll sign off on all the paperwork, and um, you guys should be all set, ready to go. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks Yep. Thank you. Uh, so, you'll, so I was going to ask the DPW director to um, to give us his report regarding the snow and ice. Uh, <coughs> budget update <clears throat> which is uh something that we i'm sorry i was gonna say the fire chief was here too yes yeah yeah oh, yeah okay. i figured this I was gonna be i did thank you i think this is uh well phil's going to speak to it but this is something that the town does every year from a uh snow and ice perspective which is mike is this current this is right now yes right now 17 18. This is well, $107,000. It got, well, we're, we're talking about a DPW director report, which is on our agenda under topic eight, fiscal year 2018. Okay. So as I was saying, this is, um, the DPW director has requested, which is the law to deficit spend on the fiscal year 18 snow and ice budget. General, Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 31D. 
and uh, it's pretty much the only deficit spending the state allows you to do, and you do it for snow and ice traditionally or annually usually because you never know the true cost. So you, you put a particular amount in the budget every year, uh, and then once you exceed that, however, you then have to have a, uh, an, an affirmative action from, from the town, from the Board of Selectmen, approving deficit spending in order to be able to continue to spend as the, as the year continues on. So I don't know, you wanna, did I say that right, Phil, or you wanna yes. give a quick blurb? And... Yes, no, that's correct. You know, by law, you have to, the Board of Selectmen in this town has to vote to approve deficit spending in the snow and ice budget. Uh, currently, as of 1-5-18, uh, the salary deficit is $320.98. And the expense side of the snow and ice is from 1-5 was $11,901.50, still good. But today, we received an invoice for the salt from Cargyle for $12,130.72, which will push that budget deficit by $229.22. All right, so basically, in essence, the salary account has been depleted and is currently in deficit by a few hundred dollars. Yes. And the expense budget, now that we've just had uh, the, uh, the salt and sand uh, delivery, uh, now puts that budget basically in a few hundred dollar deficit. Yeah, as soon so. as that as soon as that invoice is processed, that but that side of the budget will be in deficit. Right. So the board of selectmen needs to vote to approve deficit spending for on a go forward basis to take care of any winter cleanups right. that that take place. Which, yes. as I said earlier, is standard practice for the town of Hatfield and pretty much every other community in the state of Massachusetts. Yes. Okay. Uh, and Phil, in case anybody had any questions, in included the, you know, the chapter and verse. <coughs> okay, Chris. But. Can I ask what the budget was to begin with for salt and wages? Sure. This year. Forty. Yep. It's it hasn't. You know, it's changed just a little bit in the past four or five years. Uh, the current budget for this fiscal year is the same as last fiscal year. So the salary. The salary line for the budget is $12,587.98. That's overtime? That's just for overtime. Okay. Okay. Yep. And when we go out, it's about $300 an hour. I understand. Well, I want to know why it went to 107,351 is. That's not in this year. That was for fiscal yep. 17. So We're going to talk about that with okay, the finance okay. committee. So, okay, that's fine. So now we are paying for fiscal 17 and fiscal 18. Is that what I'm saying? It's Chris. Okay, so I, 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 and I understand and I'm trying to be polite. So that's a whole different topic that we're going to be addressing, we'll be addressing in about 20 minutes. Okay. Okay. So this this was to so right now we are approximately fifteen thousand dollars over budget this year. No. No, we're five hundred bucks. Five hundred. Five hundred dollars. And this is this is the Mass General Law allows cities and towns just we'll, just as an overview to deficit spend in snow and ice because it's one of those things that you can't predict exactly how much you're going to spend. You you know you remember the days right. So, so rather than try to anticipate um, what the costs may be, the state actually did a good thing and says, well, incur the costs, and, and then you have to pay it up basically the following year. Rather than tie up other budgets for those amounts of monies that other departments might not be able to use because you've got it allocated for snow or ice, which may or may not happen. That's kind of the, the gist of this. So, I know you know that. That's you know as much for the townspeople as well. So, so I'm going to make a motion that the town of Hatfield um, vote to deficit spend in the fiscal year 18 snow and ice budget according to Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 31D. Is there a second? Yeah, I'll second. 
Okay, so the motion's made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? No, I just, I just, well, I just want to point out, you know, for the town's people is the average cost on snow and ice has been around 60 or 70 a year. So when we go into the next discussion, we should be discussing that to bring it up. So I just want to point that out, that we, we've been putting in a low budget, low balling it, hoping there wasn't a lot of storms, but there has been. That's all. Okay. Did no, I, I agree. It's been under budget because we've still got, I think what he's alluding to is last year's that is a problem yet, and now we've already incurred this year, so I agree. So, so the motion's been made and seconded. No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Quick, just a quick question. Can we follow up, Bill, in this year's budget, you said that the salary and wage line item was 12006 approximately. Correct. What's the expense line item? Just to complete yep. the just answer complete. for sure. Chris. 33, 35, roughly, I think. Hold on. So, it's $31,448. All right, thanks, Phil. Thank you. And, and could we possibly get a periodic update, like on a monthly basis during the rest of the winter of where we're at? Yeah. yeah, either yeah. Phil or probably the accountant would be able to provide that yeah. to us. I mean, we, we keep a running tab of those storms, so. Yeah, yeah and if, if you recall, actually, just as long as we're still talking about it, um, I think the first one or one of them was Christmas Eve or, or Christmas Day night. I mean, I mean, we've gotten hit on weekends and yeah, you know, we I can't mean, predict. You know, everybody, everybody thinks that the big snowfall is the most costly, but really it's the smaller yeah, storms with the material because right. the material is so expensive. Right. Can I ask a question? I got a phone call this morning, and, and I don't know. But I was told that in the past that we didn't plow unless there was at least three inches of snow, and you don't go out until then. Is that how it still works? Uh, depending on what the forecast is. You know, it, it all depends. I mean, if, if you get a couple inches of snow and the temperature is supposed to go down, like mm -hmm. tonight it was supposed to go down to like eight degrees, Degrees. it's better to get this get it off and clear the roads whether it's two inches or three inches yep no set rule then no judgment call rule. thank you you know later in the year if there's you know in march if you get a big storm you get storms small storms you might Melt. wait yeah. wait because you know the temperature is going to rise the following day or that night but you know if we didn't clear it off this last couple of times with the temperature where it went yeah it got pretty wet and heavy today, too. <laughs> today, correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, you're just reporting on snow and ice or other things? Or you are you going to be around go for this? <laughs> Anything? <coughs> you sure? I'm sure? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Just a question. When, you know when we talked about the Straits Road project last time, you guys were doing it because you said it would cost less? Yes. And pe people call and ask me this, so I, I say I'll find out an answer. So when I see you, I try to. Um, so... Did you guys do all the excavating, et cetera? So I got a question as to why um, when the water main break happened on Pantry Road that the town did not do the excavation themselves while they hired um, a company by the name of Marion Construction. Yeah, Marion Construction did it. Yeah. Because we it's really didn't know what it was because the last time we had a break on Pantry Road up a little bit further just before the Waitley line, it turned into a fiasco with that main. It turned into a total fiasco. Mm -hmm. Luckily, this was a pretty quick fix. It was just the service that broke. So, and plus the conditions, I mean, it was pretty cold. <laughs> it was pretty okay. cold. You know, we really don't have that kind of equipment to do that. Okay. Is, <clears throat> now, um, this one, I had, a, I had a question, and I think I found out the answer, but is the excavator still in use? I understand there was an accident. Our excavator? Yeah, was there yes. an accident with it or something? Yeah, we, have run? we have a backhoe. A rubber oh, wheel okay, it was called an excavator when I got the question, so. Yeah. All right, so it doesn't need repairs or anything? Or uh, it leaks a little hydraulic fluid, that. but that's about it. Okay. You know, it's not a regular track machine like just about is the standard today in the industry. Yeah. So. And any further questions I'll ask you later, but I just yeah. want people that ask to make sure, <laughs> sure they know I ask you the questions, yeah. Thank you. No, the, the other questions I'll ask him okay. later. Okay. You know. Ed, did you have anything else for Phil? No, I'm good right now. 
Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Phil. All right. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, uh, Fire Chief Gaughan is here um, to present some uh, fee schedule suggestions and changes. And Hi, Stephen. Here, I printed a couple other quick things. Oh, okay. Comparison of rates I just did it today. I should have. Oh, okay. So uh, I'm here for two things. Um, so, in order to uh, update the, the ambulance billing rates, yep. it, it has to pass through the select board. Um, I issued you a, a letter as how it's supposed to work, and then you would vote on those rates. Um, as I had a little more, I wanted to get that to Marlene early. We had the holiday and stuff, so I just got that out to you. It's a very simple form which talks about the new rates. Um, ambulance billing rates are, are really an interesting thing. Um, because realistically, we live on two rates. We live on the, the, the Medicare mass health rate, which is dictated by the government. That's all we get. And then we live on the, um, we, we, we have the, the other rate, which is our regular rate. Um, so it, it, we, uh, last time, I actually thought we'd updated rates more recently, but when I reached out to the billing company and said, when do you think the last rates are? They said 7-1 of 15. I think it was 7-1 of 16. But either way. That's you. You, on, you have a comparison of rates in your packet. It's, it shows our old rates, yeah, the eight seventeen eighteen. I'm sorry, I should say one seventeen eighteen. That that would be today's, um, the rates we would be looking at now. That's the rates that are in the letter. Um, and on the on the right hand side, you see CMS, which is the Medicare rates. Um, so where do these rates come from? Well, it, it, there's been a lot of formulas used over the years. We used to use a Medicare plus. 100% and we're using Medicare plus 200%. There's actually some legislation out there that Marlene and I talked about a while back that it's Medicare plus 300%, which is might be something that we're going to, the Massachusetts is going to pass for the private insurances, but we don't know. It's, it's gone back and forth. It has loopholes, involves Blue Cross and payments to patients and things. Um, but what we have is that Medicare rates generally don't go up. In fact, if, if we looked at the, the rates on the right, the CMS rates, um, those, in fact, don't even cover the cost sometimes of doing the call when you start looking about equipment used, materials mm -hmm. used. That doesn't really even take into account personnel and, and, and vehicles, but just straight equipment used. Medical supplies are not, are not cheap. It doesn't, you know, it's expensive to run an ambulance. Um, so the rates I'm proposing are rates that I've, I've talked with two private um, billing agencies, ours, and a separate one that, that I, I used to utilize. Um, I talked to them. These are our customary and collectible rates. Um, what this means is if you had a Tufts, you had a Harvard Pilgrim, you had a Blue Cross Blue Shield, this is the rate you're billed. Um, we have a generally significant uh, <coughs> a reasonable collection rate in, in the 80s, in, in the 80 percentile, 80th percentile, um, and, and so that's how it works. Every year you up your rates to, to make up for cost of, of durable goods, um, cost of fuel, and in fact, the, the fact that you know insurance goes up and, and the cost of an ambulance is, is, right. is not cheap. So those are my, those are my, um, the rates I'm, I'm proposing that we adopt is the rates on the letter, um, which is the middle column on your comparison of rate sheet. Right. The other sheet I gave you is the, um, just an interesting fact sheet, a comparable. The, it says, uh, coastal medical billing summary. This is a, a, a sheet. You should have a two-sided sheet, an FY17 and FY18 sheet. Um, that's some, this is something that I review monthly with the accountant. Um, and then Marlene and I talk about it monthly, but I don't know if I actually, we don't actually sit and look at the, dot, the figures, but we talk about it on a regular basis. Um, you'll see there's noticeable difference between FY17 and 18, and that, that's from some of the operational changes we've made, um, increasing the, the hours, the deputy, the overnight on call, and stuff like that. So we, we have a noticeable difference in this. Um, obviously, it takes months and months to, to receive, to, to, to collect on an ambulance bill. Um, beyond popular terminology and, and some, some discussion that was had, the ambulance has not actually operated in a deficit. Ne their ambulance has never made less than it's cost us, um, ever. You know, years ago, somewhere around FY14, there was an accounting issue where the accountant at that point paid expenses out of the revenue line as it came in, which then put the bottom line... Right revenue figure lower. 
Right. Um, last year, the am FY17, the ambulance exceeded its expenses. In fact, if you take some other figures that the, the, the account, town accountant currently and I are working on, the ambulance is truly somewhere between twenty and, and forty thousand dollars in the black. So um, we're continuing to move forward. This is a very positive thing. You can see we're already ten thousand dollars realistically over last year at this point, but our build out is sixty five thousand dollars more. We're going to see eighty percent of that. So we are continuing to operate in, in, in the black. We're continuing to be positive for the community. So uh, we just want to adopt new rates. Okay. Well, thank you. So um, and you mentioned it. Um, already but just just to to say it again out loud so uh, we haven't had a rate increase in basically three years um, almost three years like two and a half years right it was july 2015. yeah i think it's probably been about two years two years we didn't have okay. one last year all right okay oh because oh, i just thought you said you do it every year so so i do usually do it every year we had made a significant change in, in when I when I made the last change and, rate yeah. rate change to these and so I, I didn't make one in the middle year because I said you know what let's work on other operational things because I really want to look at the factors that were affecting the cost effectiveness of the ambulance and so it was just not to keep playing with rates we also don't ever you know we have a hardship policy in town right. we have a hardship request system yep. um, and then <coughs> we, we have a billing agent that we work on on payment plans I, I don't know if anyone we would truly ever ever driven in any kind of deficit personally because of their ambulance bill okay that's what i was going i was just wondering um because you had the medicare and we don't balance bill. Just, that's the other thing you should do we don't balance bill so medicare it is it's we are only legally allowed to bill that that, that amount medicare. right yeah. I, I realize that but so if someone doesn't have the the uh regular column that's whether or not they have insurance the regular column that's, that's the if same, you, it's, it's either it's, way yeah it's tough it's the yeah the, the regular the regular bill that you approve. It's Tufts. It's Blue Cross. It's it's Harvard Pilgrim. And in fact, we have no pushback from from any and all of those carriers and others. Okay. Great. Any other comments or questions, yeah. Cindy? Ed, did you have any questions? No, or I comments? mean, the, this proposal is average to what everybody else is. Yeah, targeting. yeah, and, and that's why I, that's why I search out the billing agents. I have the collectible and customary yeah. figures that come from them, and and it's of their top fifty collectible and customary customers huh. or services so Ed yeah Brian uh, I was one of the creators of the ambulance originally and I thought I heard Stephen say that we're going to be in the black you said Stephen the, amb the ambulance yes the ambulance will be in the black after the May town meeting okay. does that include a new ambulance or money for a new ambulance no it won't include it black. And a new ambulance is three hundred thousand dollars, two hundred ninety. And, and no, it, it's not enough in the black. It's only going to be about twenty thousand dollars, maybe maybe twenty five in the black. Okay, so uh, well, well, plus plus one year's operating expenses. So it's actually the ambulance surplus. The close of one year, open the other. Well, ambulance surplus will be ninety something thousand dollars, roughly. Okay, because uh, I know there was talk when I was selecting that the bottom line was: do we go with an ambulance service, continue it? Uh, let the townspeople pay for new ambulance, or do we look for a service to take care of the town of Hatfield? Um, those it, were the issues back and then. And what happened back then was that the, the accountant spent out, of, spent out of the revenue line, and so we had a number of years when the ambulance was bringing in $65,000, and we were expending $30,000. So we getting credit for it. In, on other things, including oh. things outside the ambulance. And then we only had $30,000 to turn into the next $60,000 a year. So where'd that put us? That put us with the $29,000 that we're talking about in, in, the, in, the, in the deficit issue. Yeah. Um, but it continues to make more every single year yeah. than it brought in. No, and, and if we stay on track like this, yes, we will someday again be able to purchase an ambulance from the ambulance surplus. Or even- Good goal. Even potentially pay the lease, which, which I've talk, we, we've talked about as a potential if we, if we lease a new ambulance, so. There's a lot of options. It Great. I'll make working much better than they were. I'll make a motion that we set the ambulance billing rates for the Hatfield ambulance as presented by the fire chief. Is there a second? Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? No. Uh, yes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, Stephen. The other thing that I yep. have is the, the fire fee schedule. The fire Perfect. fee schedule. Yep. So I gave uh, I gave Marlene a highlighted one. I don't know if yep. yours came out highlighted. You should at least okay, excellent. See, we'll see it changes. Yep. Um, I just quickly skim down it. I'll, th what this is, if you have any questions directly, I'm going to talk about a couple of the high high the high points. Um, some of it is just is just clean up. You know, we've grouped a few things together. We, we've seen some reasonableness in some things. 
the um, annual inspection, life safety, department of public health, liquor license, boarding house. Um, that's actually a, a kind of inspection services issue. We, we've always done those inspections and we actually were, the town was issuing invoices for $100 in those inspections. But what we learned um, this year was that neither fire nor building nor board of health had an applicable uh, fee in their, their, their fee schedule to actually be invoicing this. Um, so I spoke, spoke to the building inspector and such and, and, and we, the, the easy thing is that we're just going to do it we put it in our fee schedule. I, I've actually spoken with Kyle about whether we I, we can split it when it comes in, if that if he feels it's necessary. But that's that's a housekeeping thing because mm -hmm. we really were invoicing people for years and years with no fee schedule that pointed to that. Right. Okay. No um, fee schedule for which one? It, it the the one twenty five the certificate fee the annual inspection okay. top first page, second line, third line. So we're doing liquor license inspections and, and, and mm -hmm. Department of Public Health inspections on, on those facilities. And, and we were, the town used to invoice them $100 for this, or $125, but we didn't, no one had that fee in their fee schedule. Right, the rates, yeah, those right. rates just changed. And so Kyle and I had ago. discussed this, and we, we talked with Linda about it when Linda was here, and we were like, this, we need to figure this out. So that's a correction for that. Um, the other stuff is, is there's, there's no, um, there's a couple simple increases on, on, on propane and, and oil. Um, <coughs> there's a short-term event fee, so you'll see it for LP, uh, propane. So we never had one of those in town, and, what, and really that's like food trucks, but the applicable fee would have been a $50 fee, and I will tell you that I don't think that's right for someone coming to town to do business for a day that we're charging some business $50, $50. When I charge somebody, a homeowner, 50, I charge a business $50 to put a 250-gallon tank in your, your yard, and I was charging these food trucks, you know, for 40 gallons, right. you know, or 40 pounds and so I in doing that we just made that it's a it's a new thing it's $25 it just allows us a little reduced fee obviously an easier fee on the, the business owner coming to town whether a food truck or somebody else um, some of the other stuff we just grouped some stuff together we, we looked at some of the business stuff we used to if you put a fire alarm in your house it was a $50 permit fee if you put a fire alarm in your huge business. It was a $100, $50 permit fee. It doesn't make a lot of sense when the homeowner's paying the same as the big business. The business should pay a little bit more. Um, it's again in accordance with, with many other pe of our neighbors. Um, I think that's really it. And it, we didn't have a standard report fee in our fee schedule, right. which is what we were used to. It, it realistically, you could charge the cost of the highest, um, the, the, the cost of the uh, the lowest cost of the applicable person who can access those records and issue them. So $30 just makes a standard easy thing. Great. So uh, just so for my mm -hmm. clarification, so if it's highlighted in yellow, that's a change. The it's rest, change. Are, the, the rest are the was, same as they've yeah. been. Oh, okay. Some of them have just been, yeah, uh, it's the same. And so yeah. some of them, are, and I really, some of them got grouped. Um, yeah. Some of them are, are come to more of the current standards. Well, none of these, just looking at them by themselves, is in any way exorbitant. There's no direct exorbitant in so, anyways, you know. So I mean? people who do business in town, cutting and welding, yeah. waste oil, none of those went up. But yeah. To the big per person operating a business in town, there's no, nothing yeah. went up on them. Good. So. Okay. False alarms. Is that per year or is that just on and on? I believe the bylaw says per year. I think the false alarms fits within the bio. I think it, I think that one you can trace that to the town bylaw. I believe it's annually. Oh, yeah. We really don't have much of that anymore, which is nice. Over the years, we addressed a lot of those. Were those um, like circuits that would ring into the fire department? Is that what the they're, false they're, alarm? They're, they're, like something getting their alarm something getting that tripped. Maintained yeah, yeah, to the best yeah. of their ability, yeah. and and therefore, but it doesn't really happen anymore. Technology's gotten so much better. Yeah, that it's a whole different switches. A whole are, different game. Aren't so crummy anymore. Right. So. Yeah. All right. Uh, That's it. All right. Thank you. I'll make a motion to accept the fee schedules presented by the chief. Is there a second? No second. Is there any further discussion? No. All right, Cindy. No, sir. Right, great. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Right, thank you. Sure. Quick question. Yes. Uh, are these, is the, is the ambulance schedules and these new fee schedules, are they, what are they effective immediately? Immediately. Yeah. Okay. Well, I notify the businesses. I give them a grace period. I'm not going to. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was. It was but the good. ambulance stuff, it'll take me two days. But yeah. Yeah. It'll kick in immediately almost. Brian? Thanks, Stephen. Yeah. Ed. Yeah. Um, you give Phil a copy of 
your next ambulance when you need it so we can plan on that? It's it's in capital. It should hopefully come this year. It needs it's 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 in capital and prepared for this so year. We're leasing the ambulance for like a five year. So I, I I've spoken to Phil. Phil and I work together. And we've got some leasing options, a five year and a seven year option that, that can be it can be investigated and addressed. Okay. But yes, we have specs. We have strong figures, and Phil's helped out a lot with that in the lease options. Thanks. Um. So I believe the Finance Committee will be joining us momentarily. Mm -hmm. So why don't we continue, uh, if that's okay, with Ed and Cindy and you, Marlene. You want to hit your report, the uh, Town Administrator's report? Sure. I'd be glad to. Topic number nine. Yeah. Uh, so we had applied for a land use planning grant the funding has been approved um, for Pioneer Valley Planning to work with the planning board, um, amending the current open space development bylaw and to create an accessory dwelling unit bylaw. Um, the town will cover um, the match, which is $2,500. Right. So I had received that information shortly after the new year. That's good news. Uh, Pioneer Valley Planning has announced their 2018 District Local Technical Assistance Grant, and I have received interest from the Planning Board Chair, Bob Wagner, that the Planning Board would propose a project um, submitted to PVPC for, there's some options, um, right. and they would like to look at planning ahead for housing or planning ahead for growth. And I would just ask if the Board of Selectmen would support that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, we've been, we've been having this conversation now for, uh, at least from a housing, this, this is probably mm -hmm. a little bit different, but, you know, in, in conversations and meetings we've had with the Planning Board, you know, this goes back a year or a year and a half, right? And we established the Committee for Housing and Affordable Housing, um, uh, looking for assistance from other um, town boards uh, in anything they may provide. So uh, I, I definitely think that if the uh, planning, um, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission is willing to uh, to assist us in those efforts and, the, and our planning committee, then yeah, I, I think that's something we'd be interested in. And it's the planning board requesting this, correct? It is. Yes. And also, when we met with uh, Representative Colcott and they <coughs> talked about the Route 5 stuff that kind of mm -hmm. seemed to come into play, maybe they can work with them also. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a good time for, for mm. this. Did you require a vote or just a little? Uh, yes, if the board would vote to support that. You make a motion to support the planning board's uh, project submission planning ahead for housing. Second. The motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, Marlene. Thank you. I, on topic nine, did you need uh, no, a No, it was, it was just, just an a, update. A FYI. Okay. Yeah. PVPC right. will be moving ahead with the planning board on that. Okay. Um, topic 11, sure. we continue to review the human resource manual. Yep. And so the next sections that follow, section six, is the termination language, and section seven, non-discrimination and equal opportunity. So there was no, um, <coughs> in, in reviewing this, there was nothing that I'm not know, recommending any changes at, at right okay. Okay. this time. I didn't see anything highlighted or... Did um, Cindy or Ed, did you have any comments no, or anything? Okay. Um, no, you have to have it. It's not really enforceable, but you have to have it. Yeah. So. The preferred. Um, it's more of a request. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. So, um, so I guess Marlene, um, since none of the three of us have any. Yeah, changes, no changes to it. I guess we can just consider these two sections. Well, the section six completed. Okay. <clears throat> and then under section seven, which is the non discrimination and equal opportunity um, section, did anybody have and a that's comment? That's pretty standard. For a question on that? 
No. Okay. We're all good with that particular one as well. Okay. Okay. So, John, could I ask you to just take five while the Finance Committee comes in and takes their seats? <coughs> all right. Thank you. Uh, so the Board of Selectmen is now joined by the uh, Finance Committee of Hatfield. Uh, to talk about the special town meeting we're having next Wednesday, January 24th, uh, which we talked, spoke about a little bit earlier, on, and to review the, um, the warrant and the motions and some of the funding sources for that special town meeting. So, how do you want to, uh, well, thoughts of kicking it off or overviews again? Sure, or? we, we <coughs> a quick overview. Um, we, I know we all got the letter saying we, there was discussion about take, taking out a loan, um, and that's no longer an option. Oh, I'm sorry, my ro the robot's calling. Not anymore. Um, and so I assume you all have the same, yeah. the funding sources mm -hmm. in front. We, we did have a thought. Um, the 16,000, the feasibility study. We thought maybe we would leave that alone. I was thinking the same thing, actually. So that would make the 202, 582 from stabilization make that 218, 582, 31. Then, you know, then the that's the Council on Aging feasibility yep. study. We'll just leave that alone. That makes sense. And then you would add we would take the fifty thousand dollars out of the the, the steps. Um, yes. Yeah. Money, you know, which we recognize too that the steps need to be repaired, but they're not going to be repaired right away. So, um, I'm sure we can find that money at a later date. And then uh, I'd like to thank the departments that offered the $50,359.69 from their current budgets to, to help with the deficit. So that's what we thought would take care of, take care of the um, 305. And that's everything. Does Marlene, there wasn't anything else we have to fix. I know the schools had an increased cost of Voc Ed, not transport. Was it transportation or an it's additional, additional student? Additional, one. Yeah. Right. additional, additional student. cost. Is that to in this it. or no? We'll deal with that later. Correct. Thanks. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, uh, so I, I think it's probably appropriate, even though many people here uh, and many people on TV are, are probably aware of what we're referring to. But um, once again, the the state has identified a three hundred and five thousand um, dollar deficit in our fiscal year 2017 budget. Um, they've identified it as a deficit, therefore it's a deficit. Uh, having, having said that, um, we, uh, we believe that um, a very good percentage of that actually will be coming back to us in some form because it more of uh, the way funds and balances and debts were, <coughs> were actually were, uh, recorded by the town, and that's what the state's going by. So, so it is what it is as far as that goes. Um, I would also like to thank all the different departments, and there were many that uh, were able to <clears throat> lessen their current budget. Uh, the fiscal year we're in right now, with only you know five or six months left to go, uh, totaling fifty thousand um, dollars, and we we collectively and, and the town appreciate that. Uh, Daryl mentioned that um, we had spoken about, uh, after much discussion with some of the uh, ourselves and the, actually the folks that were here at the last meeting about, well, can we leave stabilization as is and actually request a short-term borrowing to pay down that $305,000 debt and then turn around and, and pay it back once, once monies are released to us? And the answer from the Department of Revenue is no. So that's, that's an update for, uh, for those of you who uh, were here last week, uh, some of whom are here tonight. We, we, we did go for it. Um, we did ask the question 
and, and basically, I think in a nutshell, and we were all on an email we received, uh, said that if, if you have funds that you could use to pay down that deficit, that's what you should do. That's what, that's what we want you to do. <laughs> so, and we, between our town hall stabilization fund uh, and our general. town's general stabilization fund, uh, we have roughly 400, a little over $400,000 in those two combined. Therefore, we would not be able to take out a loan. Uh, there's no mass general law that allows you to do it. There was, we had all the chapters and verses, so mm -hmm. um, that was, that's what came of that. Uh, also, so people uh, are aware, uh, the financial team from the town, as well as the town administrator, the finance committee chairman, <coughs> and the board of selectmen chairman, our, requested, our presence is requested in Worcester next Tuesday morning to meet with the DOR and uh, different levels within their organization want, want to meet with us personally. So we're heading to Wista Road next trip. Tuesday. So, so, okay, so Ed, Ed, uh, Ed had a question. Yeah, I have, a, I have a question. Since the DOR won't let us take the money and borrow it. Yes. I would expect us to have some kind of an article on the annual town meeting warrant that would state that it would be paid back to stabilization. And if it can't be paid back then, I think another article would be at the next town meeting so this money does get paid back. Because the last time we took it, I think Daryl and I were on the board together, we never paid that money back. And I'm afraid that's what's going to happen this time and it's not going to be there for a rainy day. So I think before any other projects are done in this town, those monies are paid back to the stabilization before the projects get initiated. You're here, Brian. I, I, so I, if I could just make a comment or a response to that, um, <coughs> I totally agree with you. Got to throw the caveat out there. So we should be we should be replenishing those accounts that we have to take the money from. Totally agree. But we can't predict the future of anything that may or may not happen, Ed. So, so that is the intent. I think I speak for the entire finance committee and the board of selectmen when, yeah, because we've got, we want to build up and have that stabilization. But I, can we sit here and make a promise? I mean, that's been the intention for, the, for that initial amount that you guys just referred to, uh, just mentioned. So. Two years ago, we made that yeah. same promise, and I won't make that promise again. Well, it, our it, intent is yeah, to... The intent is to do it, and, you know, the idea is that we finally get this financial stuff, <laughs> for lack of a better term, because we're on TV, uh, resolved. And that, that is just going to open up uh, our... our it's going to open up our finances. It's going to open up our um, our credibility. Let's let's put it that way with the state. And and once we have these issues resolved, which we're we're all working diligently on, uh, it's going to change the way our free cash is allowed, the way our budgeting is allowed. It's it's all going to come to be. So, having said that, we can't put back something if we don't have it to give back. But the intent is absolutely to replenish the reserve accounts. Right, but I'm sitting back here. I've been in this town politics for 42 years. And when the sewer went in 30 years ago, there's a drastic need to update those lines. There's yes. water lines that need to be replaced. We appropriated two years ago, we appropriated money for the water line to come across Mill River. And it still isn't done, and it's going to cost us a hell of a lot more money then. What's doing being done about it? It's not, the jobs aren't being done, the prices are going up. And we're not getting our money's worth. It's costing us more money. You guys got to act on this stuff. You got to make them do the job. If they're not doing the job, get rid of them. I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. I I'm a little upset with what's going on here because the projects aren't getting done, and then we got issues like this coming up. We're using stabilization. We have a drastic water main break, and we have no money to go after it. All right? So it's time we get off our high horse and get these jobs done, period. Thank you. Mike? I'm sorry, Mike. but that's the way it is. No, no. That's... Can someone uh, share with us the departments and the amount that they have uh, for, for their foregoing in their current budget to, that makes up this 50000 
Um, yeah, I, I mean, some amounts are larger than others. Why don't I tell you? Let's see a copy? Yes, yeah. That's all. Oh, okay. All right. Just give me a copy. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think one thing that we can predict is that. I think you should read that, though, because not everyone has a copy. Yeah. yeah so, we can Go ahead, Brian. Copy and read it. All right. Um, so the, uh, the, the, the town clerk's office, uh, the fire department, the treasurer, um, the collector, the accountant, the DPW, the police department, the assessors, uh, and a large amount um, came from the school department as well. So um, and the total of all those is 50, roughly $50,000. And I, I would also say, um, as much as we appreciate this, I think every department sort of said, you know, we don't foresee having to need this right now be, between now and the end of the year. But we had put it in our budget originally because we needed it. So we may be coming back if, if something comes up. So yep. I, I just, I, I'm hoping that does not happen. Right. But Mike. Three, three questions about the DOR. Yes. Um, number one, did they actually in writing say, Hatfield, you cannot borrow? Yes. yes. Yep. Okay. So we have that in writing. Yep. <coughs> You're, you said there's a meeting on Tuesday with the DOR and Worcester. Yes. With you, Brian, Daryl, and Marlene. And the town accountant, the town treasurer, the, the financial team of the town. Okay. So, so what is the agenda for that meeting? We haven't been told an agenda. Been told that. Okay. Will you, will you share with, what's the word? I'd like to request on behalf of the town a copy of the minutes of that meeting uh, once it's completed. Absolutely do not have a problem, not our meeting, so I don't know how it's going to play out. I, I will tell you, however, that it happens to be on Tuesday, which is the day before town meeting on right. Wednesday. So I'd like, I'm hopeful that I'll be in a position, and Daryl, Marlene, and everybody, to actually talk a little bit about it as far as if it's if it pertains to town meeting at all we'll fill it in I mean there's <coughs> nothing to hide I mean it, it is what it is so um, we're gonna go down and find out what, what what it is they'd like to discuss I'm sure it's the current state of affairs if I were the betting man <coughs> Chris this is the first time this, our town has been in this problem in regards what? to ever I, I don't know. And when you're talking about, uh, you, uh, the, yeah, I, I, well, I, I don't know the answer to that, Chris. I mean, back in the day when we didn't have DPWs, who were just commissioners and things like that, it was told to us that the DPWs could come into the town and save the town money, and it was going to be the thing. This it's is what happened. Mm. Money went to other places. They came away from the commissions. They went to schools. They went to other things. And now we're in a deficit. Well, the deficit, it, to be yeah, perfectly it's, it's, honest, is more of is the more of an accounting. It's issue. an accounting. If they're not true. They're, they're not they're true not, deficits. Right. The, 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 the only true sorry. deficit. Sorry, Brian. No, no. The You're only true the same deficit thing. of this three hundred and five thousand is. Snow and ice, we did, that's 145000 Correct. That was a mistake that we made last year. And we double counted some of the inspectors. We have sure. a um, revolving fund and regular expense line, and we... The money was taken out of the wrong account, wrong basically. Account. So one's in deficit and one has a surplus. Right. And you can't make a change on the fly without going to town meeting because that's our form of government. So, so we need but beyond that, we we are fairly confident that the rest of that will be found when the accountant buttons up the books for seventeen. Right. Okay. It, it, it's sorry, Sean. Get, let me just, if I could, and then you're up. So it, it's been very hard to explain, Chris. Um, some of the folks here have been here two or three meetings and, and, and hearing us talk about it. So this, this you know, that's what I tried to say it in the beginning. Uh, I'll, I'll say it again with a little more emphasis. So these account 
these 2017 account deficits are what we are told from the Department of Revenue are deficits. And I'm saying it like that because I'm here to tell you that many <coughs> of these are not in deficits at all. Mm -hmm. but, but we were told by our it's consultant true. and the DOR that you need to, if they're appearing in their books as a deficit, you need to get rid of the deficit. And the reason the emphasis is on having this town meeting so quickly is until that $305,000 deficit is gone, perceived deficit, deficit, whatever we want to call it, we cannot set a tax rate for the town of Hatfield. If we don't set a tax rate for the town of Hatfield, we're not going to have revenue coming in starting two weeks ago for the town of Hatfield. So that's why this is so imperative. People can do it now question it and wonder about it, and we're all doing the same thing. But it, this is all about getting the $305,000 deficit off the Department of Revenue's books so we can set a tax rate and get on with our business. Brian, I think, I, I think you need to qualify that. I mean, it came across on tape, I'm sure, that it's the $305,000 deficit is showing on the DOR's books. The DOR gets its numbers from oh, I. Okay, okay, so yeah. The, those deficit numbers come from our books. Uh, that's true. And to some extent, there was uh, an oversight on, on, the, on the part of someone regarding the solar and ice deficit, but all the other deficits are accounting. Accounting, related. absolutely. I and, totally and agree, and Mike. took place internally in Hatfield in our books. And we shared and those numbers with the Department of Revenue. And it showed the Department of Revenue $305,000 worth of I agree. I, I didn't want to. Okay. Yeah. So it sounded as though, you know, it's the DOR's books, and we need to take some actions to straighten out the DOR's deficit. That's not the case. No, that's, that's our deficit from our books. Fair comment. It's, it's, that, that's a fair things, comment. Those things right. have not been reconciled. Once they are reconciled, right. yes, correct. they will be off. Right. Go ahead, Sean. So I would just... I would urge all of us to be cautious when saying, you know, or when giving a sense of how much is a true deficit, because we really don't know. You know, none of us are accountants, and I've asked, and it seems like our accountants have a sense, but they're not giving us hard numbers, and certainly in the past, we've been given assurances from our financial team that just haven't turned out to be true or haven't worked out. And so I think we do have to exercise um, a lot of caution. I wonder if it would even be legal, and I know it's probably too late, although it could happen in an amendment, to have an article regarding paying back the money based on the email we received earlier today from Laura Lee from the DOR around um, you know, legislation required to borrow money from one fund to pay it back. I mean, maybe you're able to not have that happen if you do it from town meeting, but it didn't, based on how I read that email, it said if you want to borrow money from one account um, officially, which I think is what we'd be doing by doing it in a town meeting, then special legislation needs to happen. So I don't know if that would be possible. Certainly, if it is possible, I think we should um, amend it. And then overall, and I know we're going to get to the management letter, I think that's really the big sort of, you know, thing that we need to be paying attention the to, the reforms that need to happen sort of now so that we can make sure that we're doing our best when it comes to moving forward and, you know, protecting our understanding of the actual numbers. Yeah. So. Thanks. Yeah. Ed? Okay. Brian, you're absolutely right. The town needs to approve this money. It's got to go back. It's got to be paid off. Okay. I agree with you 100%, and I think we all do here. Um, big thing is on town hall floor, you're going to have to answer a lot of questions. Okay. Yeah. Um, Sean's right in, in his way, but I'm not sure if that's going to work because, Daryl, you said that if something comes up, there's an emergency comes up, you're going to have to spend that money elsewhere. Um, you got to be careful doing that. The best thing to do would be to put it at a, an annual town meeting. And if they're during the budget process season, if there's money that you see that's going to be available, put it into, towards that article. Um, and you have until annual town meeting to do so. Um, you know, the other thing is, after this is all done, to come up with a truly justified, where's all this money? The 800000 is sitting up there somewhere in La La Land that goes somewhere, but we don't know where yet, okay? There's a lot of money that's misplaced, okay? Uh, or missing, who knows, okay? But uh, uh, that's all got to be straightened out. Because, uh, 
you know, so we know what the financial picture of yeah. the town is. I think that's very fair. I, I would just say miscategorized versus miscategorized. versus missing. Well, I mean, and I'm hearing numbers like 500,000, 800,000 being thrown out. And, you know, I've been sitting at these meetings, and I just don't know. And maybe it's the different information you're getting from the DOR. But I just don't know where those numbers are fully coming from. I mean, I think I can see them on paper, but even when they're on paper, they're based on a lot of assumptions and information that we don't have. Uh, so I'd love to know, you know, if people feel like we're getting close to, you know, $800,000 coming back to us. And that's awesome and changes my thinking on everything. I'd love think to see anybody. The, no. Nobody okay. ever said 800,000 okay. that's going to come okay. back. So, I think what uh, I think my man was talking about was the unapplied, the unapplied revenue. revenue. Yeah, unapplied revenue. Okay. okay, we're going to take a few more questions or comments. Chris? Right. Who's the town of Conference? Derek Glazer. Is he here? No. Can I ask why? He had a prior commitment. Yeah. The treasurer, and, the treasurer and accountant were asked to be here, and they both had prior commitments. We've been through they, they, meetings here. They've, they've been at most of our meetings. Yeah. Chris Smith? I guess because there's two Chris's next to each other. <laughs> yeah, okay. So when we look at this, Daryl, work with me here on Article 1. So, so the, the only legitimate deficit is snow and ice, right? There's okay. two of them. Let's look at Article 1. $107,351.68 expenses, $37,551.80 for wages. Those would be true deficits, correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Those are not accounting errors. Correct. That's, That's correct. what I said. Yeah. Okay. And so and same 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 with inspection wages. Okay. That was just a count. Three hundred and five thousand. Add the inspection. We're halfway to yeah. true deficit. You aren't recovering. You right. aren't. You don't have any money for stabilization replenishment. Money. We. Well, we we don't have. We aren't. If you wanted to. I mean, I'm no, sure those. Uh, no, those, those. Those are those are. Those are good true questions. deficit, a legitimate deficit. Right. So. But the money is still going to come out of right an account. The stabilization is still taking. No, no, right. So so, saying, but we're not going. You're right. We're not going to get that reimbursed to us from anybody if that's what you're even if you indicating. It out, you're still down by. No, that's a legit. That's a legitimate yes. expense. Yeah. Right. 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 But, but the others. Get back to how we do that, and that was because we didn't leave levy capacity, right, to cover it. From last year, right? Mm -hmm. Well, two things. That's what Jason said. Two, two, we we did not leave levy capacity, right. and we didn't. There's a way to account for it in the budget, and we didn't do that. Right. Yeah, we missed that. It up in 18, but right. We don't have levy capacity to do it. It right. wasn't because there wasn't. We if we had a we didn't identify it. We had known that they could have planned. If we had identified it, right. It's not that there wasn't capacity. Well, we it wasn't identified. Right. Exactly. Right. But let's just be straight and not say well, it's all going to some. It's all paper deficit. I didn't no, say that. I, we said I, roughly I, fifty. When I started, that's what I initially said. Those are the two, two, two true deficits. Okay. We're also forgetting that we can't certify free cash, so we can't touch free cash. Okay, until it's certified. So until we right. know. I'm not even sure if you guys have a true figure of what free cash is. We have no okay. idea. Okay. So, <coughs> this is know, step one. If it gets all rectified, yep. you're not going to get that. DOR will not yeah, certify exactly. free cash until our books are closed Snowball and thing. fully audited. And right. the other thing is with the ice and, ice and water deficit. Okay? Ice and snow. If you have over six, seven years worth since I've been in there way back when, every year we've been over $100,000 worth of deficit. Every year. So works. to me, if we're only putting in thirty or forty thousand dollars in the ice and, and water deficit, ice and snow deficit, <coughs> we ought to be looking at what it's costing is 125 instead of going with the full 125, go with seventy-five percent of it. Go with seventy-five thousand dollars. Every through. year we've made it work. We just it it's got huh? Year. It was an oversight this year. We 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 messed it up. But every year putting in that low yep. amount is not an issue, and it's done by many other towns throughout the Bay State. Yeah. But is it, I guess, is it, getting, is it getting to a point where we need to up that? 
I guess that's what I'm saying. There's maybe a little, but yeah, we, we and we've talked about it. Um, even though we're not in our financial meetings yet, we've talked about it and uh, you know increasing in a bit. You know, the advantage to deficit spending is that you can pay for your expenses the following year the exact amount. You know, when you budget, like, like every department, when you budget, you're putting in what you think you're going to spend, and you either spend it exactly or less or more. And so the idea is to not increase the snow and ice by a large amount because that money would come pretty much from other departments, right? We only have a certain pot of money. So, so But this is how we've always done it. It's how you always done it. it, it it's a perfect storm. We, we, we missed it, putting the budget together, and we've had these other issues, so it just stuck out like a sword. Well, I get that that's how it's always been done, but you know, essentially what it is, is it's just like sort of a budget trick that everyone uses so that we can, you know, leave more room on the levy for money that we don't actually have, you know, like uh, because we can push it off one year. It's always being pushed off, you know, it's so, so, you know, it really is just a budget trick that convinces us that we might have a little bit more money than we actually have. I mean, I do think we need to be closer to the $100,000 mark for, um, well, I for, I, for I believe, snow and ice. I believe but, um, know, the so. accountant did recommend 80000 Well, let's actually look at a, let's look at the average, though. I mean, we can get 10 years worth of data, right, and pull something okay, that's in between. Let's, 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 let's get know, back to the... That'll like, be a I, good I, discussion that we'll have during the budget time. process. Yeah. Point well taken. I mean, yeah. you know. I couldn't agree more. I'm sure we won't miss it this time. <laughs> oh, no. You we'll said it because it's been on the tip of my tongue, but I didn't want to. Okay. But you're right. Isn't Again, nothing else either. I think a larger part of this is that, and it goes back to the 147, we haven't had a chance to replenish the 147. Our free cash has been held back at least in part, a portion, not whole, portion. for the last three years. So, And I think that was also part of how that was missed. I mean, I have no idea, but that, it seems to me we usually use free cash to pay back that snow and ice deficit. We didn't have free cash last year. So right. we've been dealing with this. It's a three-year issue on the free cash thing that they've been holding back and penalizing us. It goes back even further than that. But I think that also contributes his, to this. So, I mean, mm -hmm. there's that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I think the other thing that... Um, Daryl, you and I haven't spoken about this yet. Okay. I, I think I think that uh, if it's okay with both of our colleagues, uh, my colleagues and yeah. your colleagues, uh, I think we should at town meeting, if the town moderator allows, probably have an opening statement. Um, mm -hmm. Both of us, one of us, together. Together. To to because I'm sure like you guys have over the last few weeks, you come in and you look and you go, oh, deficit, deficit, deficit. And, uh, <coughs> we try to explain it in a way that the best we can from the, from the DOR, and it's our own accounting issues, granted, for much of it, as to why it appears as a deficit. But I, I think if we can try to give a, uh, an overview uh, at the beginning of town meeting as to what this really means and why this is here, I, I Hopefully that would be the discussion up front, and then we can get into the into the articles. I don't know. I was yeah, just yeah. just a thought. I mean, rather than just go in and just you know, people are gonna go, what are you? What is this, right? So, I mean, and, I, and I think the other in that statement, I think I think it would behoove you not only the what and the why, but what are we gonna do about it? Yeah. I think that going answers, forward, yeah. that's the answer's got to be there, and I think we're gonna get into that next when we start talking about the the audit, the management letter. Because I have a suspicion that one of the things that the DOR is going to want to talk to you guys about is just that. Processes. Uh, and you know, you're, you're going to you know, cover the deficit and we'll, we'll, we'll let you set a tax rate and we'll let, you, you know, we'll let you basically generate some revenue for the community and we'll certify some of your, if not all of your free cash. But we want to know, Hatfield, what you're going yep. to do about what this management letter says. Mm. I think that's the... And I think the community. I think that would be great. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I, I, and I don't disagree, Mike. I, I would imagine that's exactly the conversation we'll be having next week. Yeah. No snowstorms on the horizon or anything, right, for Tuesday? <laughs> oh, nice. That was my segue into the management. <laughs> All right. So um, I know you folks met 
before our, a little while ago, before our meeting. So did you, did we need to go through these or was what you came out with and, and suggested for funding sources funding, for, for funding. well, for, for the actual articles? Oh. I mean, did you want to, or is that what you want us to we do, did Marlene? did not go through the actual. I don't mean dollar by dollar, but I mean, so is there a consensus <laughs> that the step amount Let's go over the, the financial part again. Yes. So, okay. You know what I mean? Um, you should. And, and by the way. Yeah, give that, that's an additional. Give that. There's nothing in the warrant that would be affected, though, is there? I mean, oh, I guess the Council on Aging piece. Yeah. So, we'll, yeah, we'll just table that when we get, you know, yeah. it's already there. To that. Um, but the true amount, so the, the fiscal year 2017. Um, Deficit is three hundred and five thousand dollars, as re, as made up of all these things which the folks will have um, yeah. in front of them. In, but there's an additional amount from the. Uh, it was three thousand in wages, right, Marlene? When you and I spoke earlier today, wasn't the total amount three, really three eighteen something? Right. Because we're taking we're taking care of correct. two other. It's three hundred eighteen thousand nine forty two, three thousand right. dollars to put into a line item in the operating budget that would cover additional inspections for the inspectors. It would be in addition to the stipend they received. They were receiving it. Um, the intent was to receive it through that revolving fund. We would be abolishing the revolving fund and creating a line item in the operating budget yeah, to we'll pay them. Right. I, I, I just want to make sure so anyone who's watching this or when we all show up in the mm -hmm. amount, right. the amount's total, 320000 We've basically been talking about 305000 right. So there, there's roughly, um, you know, the additional fourteen or 15000 that's and made up of that and the... Um, right. The, uh, right, and there was an the, additional deficit um, found in fiscal year 17, the um, inspection wages, which we right. reported at our meeting last right. week. So each of these is, uh, so we, because they're separate articles, we've got to, if they're going to be funded, right? Right. Mm -hmm. um, so, in artic so, so Article 1, it says we're going to borrow. You've got to change Article 1 because we're not going to borrow. We're just going to Oh, this is just the warrant. These are not the motions, so right. we know. These are just, yeah. The, the Board of Selectmen agreed last week prior to, to approving add that, the warrant hoping to add we borrowing. Gonna, okay, yep. transfer Correct. is in there. Okay. Yep. Right. Yep. Okay. So, and then once the we dissolve the resol revolving fund, that would fall back to free cash, whatever's in, in there. Right. Come for, the next, next, for next, year. next year. It's about 70000 in there. Yeah. Well, no, it would fall to free cash once, we, right. once it's closed. Right. It closes out to the general fund so and then would become certified. So in 19, that certified. will fall to free cash. Hey, Carol, if it goes back to free cash, can we touch it? Because they've got a free, it's not certified. It's got to be certified. certified right. It's got to be put it towards a different account so you can use that money. No, we, we, it has to, it has to close out to the general cash. fund. It has to go back to the general fund, right. fall to free cash. Yeah. 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 Fund. We tried. So it doesn't count on anything. Well, be free, it's free cash in 18, and certif 18's free cash isn't going to be certified until the fall of the year. 19. Right. So is that the same as the step money too? That'll go back to free cash. The what? The step money. That article is actually going to need to be rescinded, we'll if rescind. I'm not mistaken. Correct. Yes. And then repurposed, repurposed for lack right. of a better. That was right. originally taken from free cash. Right. And we'll repurpose the article to use that for the deficit. That will go to satisfy the deficit. Yes. Okay. Just a question: Is, is that additional eighteen thousand uh, dollars? Is that is that a separate article? I don't have the warrant in front of me. Is yes. That, is that a separate article? And why? I'm just curious as to why you all have agreed to add that article. As far as the state's concerned, we have a three hundred five thousand dollar deficit, and our this special town meeting is geared to addressing that. Um, why did you? consider throwing that in and basically adding another another element to this meeting as opposed to using the finance committee's reserve fund and taking that deficit up uh, at the annual town meeting. I mean, it just seems to me like 
It's like, it's like typical special town meetings. It's like, okay, we're going to have a special town meeting, so now let's start thinking about other things that we can add to the warrant. Mm -hmm. so I, I don't this, think that... this, this meeting is geared to dealing with this $305,000 deficit. And, and, and well, frankly, deficits in general, have, Mike. Deficits in some, general, okay. of which these are. You know, I mean, Right, but that was the original intent. You would yes, schedule yeah. a special town meeting. I would agree. Because the DOR said we need to cover this $305,000 deficit. That's a deficit the DOR is aware of. They're not aware of another $18,000 deficit. And, you know, I don't know what... <laughs> You know, yeah. if they find out about that, what, how they're going to feel about it. But nevertheless, um, it would just seem to me that you, you would want to keep this focus on this deficit because I think we're going to have a challenge on town meeting floor having to convey to everyone there the what, why, and how we're going to deal with this in the future as it is. Why add another article? when perhaps we can cover this. 18,000. I'm estimated. sorry, I missed. What $18,000 are you referring it's to? Well, it's the 13,000. It's the three. Well, or whatever it is, 14. The 3,000 from. Um, whatever, that whatever that amount is, it's, it's, it's bringing it up to three. Oh, oh, OK. You know, well, you know, 29,000 of it is the ambulance revenue, as we, we discussed. We were short 29,000 um, at annual town meetings. So we need to fund the $29,000. For and, ambulance revenue. And, and let me clarify that the ambulance revenue and wasn't, re wasn't really, was really a shortfall. Correct. It was right. applied to the wrong account. So it showed that the ambulance revenue was short 29000 right. because those right. funds went into the general fund right. so is that versus not, going is into Is that the, not part of the three hundred and five? That $29,000 ambulance deficit, that's not part of the three hundred and five. No. 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 And how, how did... How is it not? There were a number of <laughs> items. When we had that conference call with DOR, yeah. they outlined a number of, of items. So DOR just didn't catch it? They, the, oh, no, no they, they referenced They brought it to our attention. So they then brought why, that so up. So then why wasn't it just part of the they, 305? Why wouldn't they? Yeah, why so it's a separate year. thing. Separate year. Oh, okay, so because it's separate a separate year, year and they had to separate it. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Steven. I, think your answer, yeah. I can really clear the ambulance thing up really quickly. Yeah, the that'd be great. It's very simple. We had one accountant here who did who paid expenses out of a revenue line. And the money came in, 67000 came in, we spent 20-something out of it. And well, over a number of years, when that was going on, well, ambulance surplus was dropping. Right. Now, for the last three years, we have an accountant that took, I've managed the ambulance very tight, we have an accountant that took the money remaining in the ambulance account for the last three years, $40,680, and put it into free cash to general fund at the end of the year. That money belonged in the ambulance surplus. Right. So, I, I have discovered that when yeah. Arlene called me and said, you're $20,000 in the red. I said, no way, I'm 40000 in the black. And that's truly the figures. So, when um, yeah. once all said and done, the Maytown meeting, we've already looked at the three fiscal year documents. I've spoken with Derek, the accountant. We will fix the 40000 which time the ambulance <coughs> will be, will be <coughs> So basically, one accountant did things one way and caused the problem. Another accountant did another way and didn't correct it right away. I, I saved forty thousand dollars in three years <coughs> in that budget through expense, tight expenses, and payroll and everything, trying to build up the ambulance surplus because that's where it should be. So the ambulance issue will will re realistically be resolved. Um, how it goes in the next six weeks. Out. So the answer seems to be that number one, it's separate because it's two thousand eighteen versus seventeen. Actually, 14 changes. Back, back 14 Number two, we're addressing it now because DOR has brought it up to our attention. Number three, we're, we're addressing it now because why not have one step closer to getting our financial health in order? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Correct. That's my summary. Right. All right. Anyone else have anything left there? Chris? Yeah, just to keep this moving forward, maybe kind of it might be helpful for everybody. To understand why you're thinking on each article, if I might just, as a just reading it, Article One seems to be addressing true deficits, the ten items there, and then Article Two seems to address another ten that are probably paper deficits. But I, am I guessing it that right? So you have two hundred thousand, two hundred twelve dollars and twenty-eight cents of what appears to be true deficits. 
things like health insurance, over overages, snow and ice, highway wages, planning board wages, etc. And then paper deficits, uh, Smith Academy roof, band renovations, uh, SPED, things like this that are just not properly reconciled. They're all pro prior year. Prior. Prior well, year, but they're prior well in their projects, they're, and, they and weren't they're, the operation budget, yeah, they were right. capital. Even on, uh, even, even on Article 1, Chris, the health insurance, we know that. That's, that's not, a, that's uh, not no, a true. That's not, it's, okay. Yeah. It was broken down not by true def, what we're calling true deficit or, or apparent okay. deficit. It's the op, Article 1 is the operating budget. I see. Article 2 was capital projects. Yeah. All right. Thank you. That's why we right. broke it up so, that way. So then maybe you want to go to three, four, and five, and we can keep it moving. Okay. Yeah, well, right. it, I mean, a, a def, it couldn't be deficit spending on like a project. It had to be an overrun, and, and you'd be paying for unpaid bill or unpaid expenses. That if, if, if it truly is an unpaid expense. Right. Correct. Yeah. So. Because you can't yeah, deficit spend on something like uh, that's true. Sewer line so on North Street, okay, if they went over it, uh, that becomes an unpaid bill. Correct. And that's, yeah, and, that's and so the the capital projects are um, the majority were not uh, coded properly or identified properly um, through our accounting practices. That's that's why they're that's why we know because we've gone back to the source on some of these and asked the question and, and trying to make it clear to people. So I get Mike's point earlier, uh, and he's, he's absolutely correct when he was saying, well, it's deficit is a deficit because that's what we reported. But the reality is some of these we know aren't deficits. They should be zero. They, should, they, they shouldn't be on here. So what we've got to do is find that deficit money and where it was really applied and then apply it back to these after we take care of this 305. And that's an in-house accounting. It's so ab it, it is absolutely in-house accounting. Right. Here to tell you, it's absolutely in-house accounting. Sure. So right. The common sense person in me said when we heard about this, okay, let's figure it out, then we'll go to town. I said it on me. TV to Mike. I said we're going to lower this because we know where it is. We and know where it is, we'll fix it. <laughs> and we were told, no, you won't. And no. <laughs> Yes, you that. will, but after you take care of it. After, after we take care of it so we can set a tax rate, and they make a good point. We yeah, yeah get, they want us to, they're holding we our... We need to set a yeah. tax rate, we need to get that more. Holding our feet to the fire as yeah. they should. Yeah, they have no, no issue with nope. DOR. Nope, not at all. So, article, so that was, article three is the ambulance and inspection Correct. fixes that, mm -hmm. and that's... How much? Thirteen thousand. How much money? Uh, it's twenty-nine plus the 29. three thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's Thirty-one. Thirty-one. Okay. So wait, wait a second. We got to be careful. So I'm I'm doing the math. So three hundred five and twenty-nine thousand fifteen plus three thousand is thirty-two. Mm-hmm. On top of three, is is any of that made up in the three hundred five? No. So we're looking. Although there is inspection, no, if you there add is inspection wages in Article One, Marlene. There's Correct. Correct. I that's just want to make sure you, so we're doing 17. this once. That's a deficit in fiscal year seventeen. 17. That's seventeen. 17. Article Three is to fund 18. eighteen. Okay. Yeah. We just don't have the numbers there in the article, so we're, that's why we don't. Yeah. Know what Sorry. Yeah. That just fixes eighteen. Yes. The but dollar amount for three is what? Article three. Thirty-two thousand fifteen. Thirty-two thousand fifteen. So this is now a three hundred and thirty-seven thousand mm -hmm. dollar budget transfers. No, the two hundred and two twelve, the eighty-six thousand <coughs> fourteen. 286. And the Let me rephrase 32. that. Part of Article 3 has, in fact, been identified by DOR, so it's, it, 
We just need the bottom line. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we keep talking about 305, and you're absolutely right. The 86 and they, the 200 is 286. They, so. they gave us a number of 305,000. Right. Then I received a list of fiscal year 17 deficits. Yes. And a, a lengthy list of fund balance deficits. So this, under Article 2, this is not all of those fund balance deficits. Understood. Some of them. But I, I think what we're probably trying to say is... 5000 is what we're over on the levy limit. That's the number that DOI... That's how they came up with the 305000 That's the amount we are over on the levy limit. 32, right. So, yeah, Marlene's number is 318,942. So, so, yeah. But we're... The numbers aren't jiving, though. No, it doesn't. Yeah, I can't. I mean, I, I get. We just can't use the 305 because it's not 305. It's 286. Right. No, no, sorry. Just as long as the, the Article 3 is 32,015, which is what Marlene's saying, then Article 3 plus 2 plus 1 is her 318,942. So, so got it. Yep. So, so that brings me to Article 3 truly is part of the 2017 deficit spending, if that's what was identified, or deficit, if it makes up the 305. Is it, I thought you said Article 3 deals with this only yeah. I think, I think. Yes. Yeah. Article 1. Well, is get the, there. State, the state hasn't even been presented with fiscal 18 numbers yet. But we know, but we know going in because of the shortfall, Mike, of where the, of where the money's ended up going into the wrong account. Yeah, yeah, I County. know, but, but you, know, you, can't, you can't include the numbers in Article 3 if those are fiscal 18 deficit numbers because the state is telling us 305. As part of 305. Right. Is, is, I, is, I, I, I concur. I agree. They're raising Unclosed. a number of issues. I agree. They're raising a number of issues. Some of them are applicable to fiscal year 17. Some are applicable to fiscal year 18. All of which total 305? 318-942. The 305 is identified on the town's financial summary. That is the amount we are over the levy limit. I don't have that information here with me, but I could show that to you. <clears throat> and that ties back to our local receipts, some of which we had uh, reported as our inspections uh, mm -hmm. receipts. We were reporting that twice. We were reporting it in the revolving fund and reporting it under local receipts. Okay, so when, when, when we budgeted for the fiscal 17, finance committee help, help out here, we had some levy limit left. Yeah, correct. We, we did. We had yeah. our levy limit. Yes. It wasn't we were, probably a couple lot, but we had something. Right. That so, is right. so if the 305 is now in excess of that levy, levy limit, what mm -hmm. you're saying is that we used whatever was left in our levy limit plus 305, that's what the state is saying? That, that, that those two numbers together uh, are the, the deficit that they're asking us to deal with, which in total ends up we have to address thousand above our levy limit. They're, they're, they're saying that we're $305,000 over the levy limit and that we, you do need to correct that in order to balance your budget. Yeah, I understand, I understand. But so what, what they're saying is that we, we overspent the levy limit by 305, but we also used up all of what we had left in the levy limit, which was in the Right, the room, $19, right. $19,000. So you add the 19 to the 305. The capacity that we did have, that yeah. I mean, that's, that's kind of what they're asking us to address, right? 324. 324, right. Yes. Yes. It's clear as mud. But, well, that's, it's, it's I, it is clear as mud because I, we, we keep talking about, I don't want to, if, if somebody just, Cindy, slap me if I'm not getting this. 305, so if you add the amounts, it's 286, right? Two. Article 1 and 2. Article 1 and 2 is 286. Article 3 is $32,000. Correct. But that, but that is, in fact, to Mike's point, 2018 money. Right. Mm -hmm. So where did so 305 go to correct. 17? Correct. Where's the other, right. Yeah. How come, how come we only have 286 accounted for, not 305,000? Right, so it's $20,000 difference. Mm -hmm. In Maybe Articles 1 and 2. Oh, I see. So, so let's keep Article 3 off. 
right. for a minute. In Articles 1 and 2, if I understand right, DOR wanted us to, to fix $305,000 worth of deficit. And what, what we add up to is two hundred and eighty-six. So we've been saying These it, are separate issues. We've been saying These it wrong. These are separate. It's they, not, you're saying, right. Yes. They're telling us you're over the levy limit by $305,000. You need to address that. You also have these fiscal year 17 operating budget deficits. Yeah. And these fund balance deficits. They're old. They need to be taken care of. Right. The 305, Edwin, I think you just had that. I, I don't know if you have the entire workbook. Um, you had this financial summary that reflects the 305,000. Over the left even. Oh, oh. Yeah. He's got it. Yeah. Right. So I don't know if you have the rest of that workbook. Um, so if you look at, and I have a, a copy, it's in bold. So if you look at the fiscal year 18 recap column, this is what Justin Cole plugged in on the recap sheet in, in yeah. Gateway. And so some of these numbers have changed from fiscal year 18 column, uh, fiscal year 18 column. We went to town meeting with this. We were under the levy by $4,948. So now we're over by 305. Looking at some of these numbers that have changed, they tie back to previous pages in the workbook. The snow and ice is in here. The uh, money that we, we took credit for from the inspections, um, and that's about $70,000. There's also, um, what else was there? I've got it right here. <coughs> there was an increase, um, or a, a slight decrease in some of the uh, cherry sheet monies. Uh, there's the snow and ice, the cherry sheet, and that's cherry sheet, and our local estimated receipts. We underestimated, we overestimated some of the uh, estimated receipts. Um, Right. So, how do we fix that when I only come up with two hundred eighty-six thousand? The two hundred eight. We are addressed. Well, it's a total of three hundred eighteen thousand that we're taken care of. But isn't the three hundred eighteen include fiscal year eighteen? 18. Yes. By thirty-two thousand fifteen. Right, and this three hundred five is fiscal year eighteen. The amount that we're over the levy, levy is fiscal year 18. It's fiscal year 18, 18, right. We're talking about all this is 18. Well, that is 18. Right. Fiscal year 18. Article 1 is 18. Fiscal year 17 deficits. Right. It's multi-year right. deficits perceived. Which carried forward to fiscal year 18. It, what DOR wants to see is I'm that we it. clean up these yeah. deficits, these fund balance deficits, yes. I, these old outstanding. Uh, but that's that sounds different agreed. from what you're just saying, though. So, so that's one issue, cleaning it up. Mm -hmm. And another issue and is the sort of over correcting how the we levy do. part and how that will continue, you know, year to year, which sounds like is their concern. But those seem like. Two different things, I guess, to me. You know, I mean, if we're just if we're just cleaning it up, that's a one-time thing. Well, it's if cleaning, it needs to go on the levy limit, it's an ongoing thing, right? I it's mean, it's cleaning up and then looking at how we do business going forward. Going going forward, so right. then we have a real problem. Though. You know, I mean, because we don't have enough money, even with, I mean, going all the way up to our levy limit this coming year to cover our current expenses if the numbers that they're presenting are in fact true. And of course, we don't think some of them are, but based on your explanation right now, it wouldn't make sense to me that DOR would put $38,000 in health insurance as an ongoing sort of issue if it was a one-time thing. I mean, what, you know, why would they do that? That's such a strange thing um, to do if we're looking at the overall issue being the levy limit, I guess, which I didn't understand prior to tonight. That was uh, the issue. 
So, I mean, essentially it sounds to me like we have no money and a big problem. If that's the luck. If well, we're, yeah. if we're over $300,000. That's always a big problem. Yeah. Okay, I, I don't, I wouldn't say we have no money. We, we have accounting issues that need to take, be taken care of. So, you know, sort of first things first, we need the $305,000, whatever it's made up of, because that's what the state gave us as a number, to, to be rectified, paid off, cleared up so that we can set a tax rate and get on with our business of having monies coming into the town coffers. Should we be referring to so, the 318-942, though? Well, that's a question I'm okay. about to ask, but I'm going to let Mr. Poshik Well, and, and if hand. I could just say, Go we ahead, can Marlene. have this discussion with DOR next week. When Pardon we me? Talk. I said we can have this discussion with DOR oh, wow. next week as well We're going to have regarding, this. The, these, yep. regarding these articles. Great. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I just wanted to say, it, it really is all about report how we're reporting yes. our operations. It's not being done correctly. It's not. It's not being done oftentimes in a timely manner, and when it right. is being done, it's not being done in the correct manner, which is right. being addressed and will continue to be addressed. Mm -hmm. But I, well, go ahead, Mike. You wanted to say to, something? Not to repeat again, but just for clarification. Yeah. The directive from the DOR is the the 305 yes. to be able to set the tax rate. Correct. And that addresses both fiscal year 17 and 18, or just 17? Well, that's kind of my question now. <coughs> well, that's my understanding is that it that takes care of those. So they must have identified. We're in 18. Yeah, it doesn't end until June. I know. It it's seems like you right. don't muddy that up. That's what I was saying in the beginning. Just address what their directive is. Well, what it, of course, the snow and ice is a 17 issue that should have been put on the 18 budget. Correct. We, yeah, we know, right. we know right. what happened that there. Right. Yep. So, but it wasn't. so same with the inspections. Yep. No. What they came out of the no, wrong. That is they, not true. Inspections is an 18 issue. It's not a 17 issue. Right. My understanding is we haven't been using it. Correctly. correctly for a right. while right that, that was in fact kind of a cleanup the, the the monies that were being received by inspection services in a revolving account weren't then being turned around and spent out of that account to pay right. to pay for those services That's it was right. all coming out of the regular budget mm -hmm. so the idea is to eliminate the revolving account and just have the inspection services come in I mean I, we we beat that to death last week but that's that's what the idea of that is but, the mo but there's money in there. That's yeah. Is, is there a way of, of simplifying this at all? <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, you, have to it, you know, the state is yeah. concerned about us <laughs> coming up with $305,000 to cover a, I, I'm assuming it's a, it's a, it's a year-to-date fis fiscal 17 deficit. Fiscal 17 is not closed yet, but whatever numbers they had received back in whenever, September, they all of a sudden discovered that we had a $305,000 deficit. Maybe they've now redefined that, meaning we've exceeded our levy limit, but whatever. But can't we just say we would like to raise $305,000 on town meeting floor to cover a total amount of deficits that have been that, identified that by total, the state? That total $305,000. And this is where we're going to get the money from. And not worry about all this detail where, you know, th there's a deficit here, there's a deficit there, there's a deficit here. That You guys can explain that on town meeting floor. If someone asks you for the detail, although it's going to be in the warrant, people are going to say, what are all these numbers? But, I mean, couldn't we just simply say that, you know, we, we need to raise $305,000, and this is where we're going to get it from. So much from stabilization, so much from departments, so much from other things. And that's it. Uh, and then when that money comes in, then we will, through a, a proper accounting of those numbers, we will eliminate yeah. the deficits. But, but why get into all of this detail I'm with you, on town meeting floor? And, that, and that deals with fiscal 17. And then if you want to put that article on for fiscal 18, then do that. But I mean, that's your call. But um, 
it just seems to me that the state's interested in us doing something to cover that 305. Right. And I think we can do it simply by just saying we need to raise money to cover that deficit, and this is where we're going to get it from. And that's it. And then deal with your 300, your fiscal, fiscal 2018 article. You know, it may be that all the all the detail that we have under fiscal one and two adds up to two eighty six. So now we're we're trying to figure out where is that? You know, where's the other twenty five thousand or third? The state doesn't care. They want us to cover three oh five. And let's just raise the three oh five and deal with the accounting of that three oh five. Do it that way next year when you go back to look at it, you're gonna say, Okay, they wanted three oh five, they got three oh five, because otherwise yeah. you're gonna be looking where it all went again. Yes. Be easy yeah. to I, I, I totally agree. You know, it, it's another one of those. You, but as we sit here tonight for the twentieth time going over this, I start looking at the numbers again, and it's like that doesn't seem to be adding up to what we talked about. So I'm with you. I don't think we need to get into the minutia of it. If somebody asks, we'll answer the question uh, as, as best we can. But I'm with you. We, we need three hundred and five thousand dollars to satisfy the State Department of Revenue so that we can set a tax rate and send everybody their tax bill. And, and I will, I, I will try to, and I'll probably hook up with Daryl over the weekend or Monday or after Tuesday's meeting with the state, you know, to try to come up with a, an opening statement very similar to to that as I alluded to earlier, to just try to lay it out there in a in a as simple as we can, um, because we you, you know people need to be on board with this. This this is a huge deal. This. Regardless of your feelings about the deficit, it's got to be taken care of. This this is a huge deal for our town. Right. We've got to take care of that so we can get those set the tax rate. Can can, and, we, can oh. we change this at this point? Change what? Change the, the article. The I think we could post table it. something or right. amend it that night. Right. right, we can amend. Right. These are these as they are now are kind of cast in stone as far as what's going to be out there. What's the amendment? I think. Uh, still deals with the issue at hand. I think you can do that on top of the floor if you want it. So, yeah, that's it. So how will that $19,000 difference get explained between the 286 and the three that's on the warrant and the 305 that we're all talking about? Great question. What's the answer to that? Mm -hmm. And then what's Let you know. I will go back tomorrow and, and take a look at all these figures. I mean, well, I had something jotted in somewhere on, on one of the original ones. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't want to hold this up. The but DOR is giving you the 305. Wouldn't they be able to tell you that? If the voters are frustrated by things like this, I mean, I, I mean, think would they be able well, to that to figure look more at reforms? Five, right, right, because so it's on the which, it's on that um, summary. Is reforms, that many of which have come over the last few come up over the last few years. Whether it's combining the treasurer collector there. position. Yeah. Uh, whether it's making that position a, a appointed position computer. versus elected, okay. um, you know, what sort of level should we be paying an accountant at? You know, for a fourteen million dollar business, you know, do you have to pay someone, you know, with sort of an extreme okay. executive level of talent? These sort of things need to be discussed about, and we need to come to some agreement, or I think we're just going to be in this same cycle year after year. So, and, you know, that's more for the people at home because. Yeah, I know a lot of folks on these boards over the years have put in the effort to get those on the warrants, and my understanding is time after time they're defeated. So. <clears throat> I think that those are um, questions and comments that um, are, are legitimate and, and appropriate for the future. Um, but to, to the point of for two, Wednesday of, of you know, keep it, if somebody brings it up, they bring it up. But you know, yeah. from from our perspective, I, I think we need to to approach the town meeting, um, with, given the circumstances, the best way we can of funding sources, and that's what we got to do. That's why we're appointed to positions. That's why we're elected to positions. We've got to go there right. and talk to the people and explain it the best we can as to uh, some of the circumstances at a high level of, of what got us here. And yep. what we're going to do to try to avoid being here again in the future. Um, I, you know, I, I hate to keep saying it, but we, you know, we, we, I think we all, and I would hope the people uh, watching as well, 
you know, need to be on board with um, this Department of Revenue really wants us to, to straighten this out and we need to straighten it out to get our, our tax rate set and our tax bills out. That's, you know, that, that's kind of the bottom line with this whole thing, quite frankly. Um, Ed, you wanted to say something? Yeah, Brian, uh, my, my concern is the front steps to the town hall. All right, we've been trying to fix those steps for six years, if not longer, okay? When you take this article away, are you guys planning to put another article on for annual town meeting to correct these problems? This, I mean, so many people have fallen on those steps, it's going to cause, I mean, someday it's going to have a real big, big lawsuit, and, and you're going to be, you're going to regret not fixing the steps. My, my personal preference, uh, but I'm part of a team of eight, uh, my personal preference is to leave the 16 for the feasibility study for the Council on Aging, leave the 50 for the steps, um, reluctantly take the f roughly $50,000 that other departments have, have ponied up, um, and take the remainder 165 ish or whatever the total amount is, out of stabilization, 130 out of each stabilization account. That's how I would like to see it. Leave the steps, because you're right, and we had this conversation before too. We need the steps done, um, but you know, I just assume that not that I'm trying to hit the stabilization accounts, but you know, it, it, it's almost if ever there was a time to to do so. It it's now. Um, if we have to touch stabilization, we have to touch it. If well, if it's so, it, you know, if you're going to, I I try to. You know, I know it's a lot of money, but if we were if we're willing to take a um, hundred a hundred out of each one, roughly originally, why not take one twenty five out of each one and leave the steps, leave the feasibility study? So I'm you know I don't know what the exact amount is, but that you know basically we were gonna the I think the the plan was to take um, an equal amount out of. As when the committee came in originally, uh, out so you just up each one by twenty five thousand. What what you'd be taking, which would leave, uh, if I'm doing this right, would leave about seventy five thousand dollars in town hall stabilization and leave about a um, hundred thousand, yeah, rough, roughly eighty, 80 I, whatever the amounts are. So yeah, one thirty four three out of each one. When when were we planning on doing the steps? See, my worry on the steps is once this construction starts. That's going to be the main entrance. You're going to be everybody's going to be using them steps, so that's going to cause another temporary issue. Ramp. And you're going to have to plan for a temporary ramp over here. Yes, yes. temporary mm -hmm. ramp. So we weren't fixing the steps right away. Well, we well, it wouldn't be before it was supposed next to town be meeting. Done, but it was done several years ago. <laughs> it, it wouldn't be. I think to Ed's question, it wouldn't be. They they aren't going to get started in May, which would be before the next town meeting. If if in fact that was another warrant article. Is there a reason, I'm slightly off, but why the steps weren't done, you know, last fall? Or you have to ask the DPW director. He just yeah. left. Yeah. I mean, I have the same question about the feasibility study, but you know, I, we can take that up in a, in a few weeks. I have to ask. Well, the a lot DPW of these are being tied into other, um, in being There's tied two. into other. Uh, so it's a timeline. So, well, no. so if the feasibility study is taking place. The feasibility mm -hmm. study is taking place, or the idea was to have it take place when the um, architects who are in the midst of doing the town hall renovation phase two are, are here. You know what I mean? It was yeah. so, it, it, yeah, kind of a timing thing. Yeah, I just had a question about the steps. Um, you know, we we're talking about the when they're going to get done now, and I'm wondering why they <coughs> haven't been done yet. Well, they weren't. They were. <coughs> They weren't done because we had to have a drawing, shop drawing. So we did the shop drawings, then the building inspector and myself got together because the drawing to match the existing step isn't the code because the way it's angled, the inside of that angle isn't wide enough. So we have to have them redrawn because the granite supplier won't cut the granite until he has the exact shop drawings. So that had to all change. So that's why. When would you expect them to be done at the thinnest? Well, I mean... I'm thinking we were going to do it in the spring, but now, I mean, we can wait till, you know, after. I mean, I know that it, one of the concerns was with the town hall renovation project, what access are they going to have to in, get into the town hall once the ramps are removed. So my understanding is they're going to put a temporary ramp on this back staircase here. So 
I mean, the front steps are the front steps. You're not going to put a ramp out to the front of the building anyway. So I, I would imagine that that's where the ramp's going to go, that according to the architect. Is, does it make sense to, if we left the money in there, would they be done this spring prior to, or is that asking a lot? It sounds like Phil's encumbered monies against that article. So I don't think we can touch that. No, I, I didn't think any money has been spent. No, there's no R. No. Yeah. Well, how about these engineering and design? The engineering things? design cost came out of facility. It came out of the facilities. Came out of oh, okay. yeah. the line. So Phil, the qu the question was um, the the fifty thousand dollar article. Um, so I guess we'll you know ask your opinion. So um, one school of thought is to take an additional fifty thousand out of the stabilization accounts to to pay down that that debt, or um, rescind or look to rescind that article for 50000 and, and repurpose that money. And, and that's okay, too, except we will have to turn around at, at some point and, and, Put that and do it, that. right? So okay. I, I guess it might be up to, uh, up to us to sort of have a conversation of... I mean, when they came looking for money out of departments and knowing that at the time of that conversation it was 100000 they were looking out of the departments because they're going to take X out of the right. stabilization, <clears throat> that that was the only real big pocket of money that wasn't expended that was right. paid for out of free cash. Mm -hmm. So to come up with half of it, and, you know, I had a talk with the school superintendent where yep. he was going to contribute X, and because there's no departments with real big budgets to tap. Mm -hmm. So then we're only, that was the only big pocket of money, the 50. Mm -hmm. And I, I really don't have a problem with giving it up as long as I'm, going to get it back eventually. because everybody knows that the step project has to be done it's got to happen it's got to <coughs> get back but yeah I, I just assume personally not take that leaves a little bit more in stabilization okay. and that's my personal point of view but i don't know my colleagues can tell me what you think but i could go either way i mean i'm supporting you know the steps were kind of thrown in somewhat last minute i'm supportive of still doing it though i don't feel extremely confident that it's going to happen before a town meeting anyway so maybe yeah maybe it makes sense to keep it on there and, and we'll vote for it on town meeting and then the money will be available i mean unless you feel feel uh feel that <coughs> otherwise it's a high likelihood we can get this done before a town meeting there's no reason why it couldn't be done before town meeting no well, there's no reason it couldn't be done before town okay, meeting. okay i mean you got <clears throat> five months already, you know, I mean, that's all they got to do is just get the job. I mean, what's it going to take? It's going to take two weeks, if that? Yeah, okay, it's, not, so it's, not, it's not a long, drawn-out process to do it, project to do. It's just it's a matter a of... Issue. Well, it's, it's more than that. If you're going to access the town hall during the construction period, I don't know where you're at with the renovations to the town hall and when that's scheduled to begin, but you're going to want to have those steps done before that begins. I know that the state is, you know, we're under some sort of a mandate for September of 18. Well, that's in a few months to have it completed. I know that's not going to happen, but I mean, maybe you back up from when we're going to start construction on phase two of the town hall, because those steps have got to be ready before that. Uh, so it's almost like the, and, and if we wait and vote, if we take that money and then vote it at the May town meeting, it's not going to be available until July. So the job probably won't get done this year. That, that's um, unless it, you know, maybe you'll be doing the steps the same time you're renovating a town hall. And I don't think that that's... But are we taking the town, the, a lot of the money for the renovation? Of the, I mean, I guess we're assuming we're going to put a lot of it back, but we're taking a lot of that money for this, too, from the town. Well, the the, that's from the stabilization, but which is separate, Sean, from the, um, <coughs> the actual money that was approved at town meeting for the phase two? Oh, so that's yeah. not the money that would pay for the, okay, so the handicapped okay. accessibility money is separate. Yeah, okay, cool. So what, were there immediate plans for that town, immediate next 18 month plans for that town hall stabilization account? It, well, for there is, it's part of the calculation. Yeah. The, okay, yes, so absolutely. it is part of it. Okay. So it is part of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And just remember, our priority is the three hundred and five thousand dollars. Right. Let's sure. get that taken care of. And no, they're not looking at the liability that we have if somebody does fall. I, 
can think of a lot of life. Somebody needs to put a stake in the sand. Or more than one. You're right. Just. Well, the warrant is what it is at this point, right? Couldn't we really some of this be? Because some well, some's going to need to be tabled and dealt with on the town's floor. Everyone can have their say. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd I, rather I, I'd rather go to town meeting with 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 hopefully a, mm -hmm. a consensus, a united amongst ourselves, opinion, amongst right. ourselves, yeah. and then let townspeople tell us what they what they think. Um, I, I mean. I, I'm okay if you want to take it all from stabilization. But. I was just going to say I'm okay if you want to take it from the mm -hmm. steps. Really, you know, I, you know, we're just like everything has to get done, so it's just a matter of, right. what, you know. Yeah. I mean, I hate to use stabilization all up, but at this point, you know, I see our overall financial house <coughs> such disarray, really, that I don't know that it really matters. I mean, because that $50,000 we're going to be pulling right back, you know, a, a couple of months later. So, you know, I'm comfortable whatever way we decide to go with the stairs. And I lean towards, I'd say, getting them done. Because so, once you mention the additional liability, that's true. That's something to consider, you know. So let's just take that from stabilization and we'll leave the 50000 alone. We'll leave the 16000 alone and... Moves that stabilization number to, uh, I don't know, I can't. From 2002 to 218 to 268, 268, 582, 31. Split it, yeah. Split it down the middle. So 134, 3 each sort of thing. Yeah. I think so. Do we have a consensus? 65 in one and 75 in the other. Yeah, a little bit more. One's at 199, one's at 200. One's at 200. We're absolutely sure that those are the <laughs> yes. uh, correct yeah. stabilization account numbers. We're only a What I've been told. <laughs> That's what's been reported to me. Just being sufficient. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Mike. <laughs> I'm with you. All right. So, so the the fifty thousand from. So we leave um, the fifty. We leave well, the sixteen. We will um, take and appreciate the the other departments we'll who have contributed, which is roughly fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. Hopefully, none of them are going to have to come back for any of that before. We'll take the rest from stabilization, and hopefully, Marlene, in the next day or two, we'll, we'll firm up these numbers. Firm up these numbers. Where from? So that when we go to town floor and say three oh five. Or not, whatever we, we not say. Yeah. It's yeah. Well, you guys are going to Worcester Tuesday, so should we have another meeting Monday to look over everything again? We'll be. Well, we'll be we going to meet in the time. library at six o'clock before town meeting. Oh. I, Ed, and I don't know that there's emotions. anything. I mean, I think we have our marching orders to. Okay, so yeah. from you guys, from we'll you guys. We'll meet at six o'clock on the twenty fourth, like okay. we usually do. We always meet an hour before. We'll be able to bring everybody. Of we'll firm speed. up. We'll firm up the numbers that are being yeah. um, that are out there. Right. I mean, yeah. If it adds up, just well, if it's really 2017, that's fine. If it's really 2018, you want us to take care of it, DOR. That's okay too. We just need to be able to speak to it yeah, intelligently, right? <laughs> intelligently as I can at, at town meeting. Yeah. <laughs> Ed. No, oh. Um, but the steps didn't really need you know, to get done you know. ASAP, and he mentioned before that they have to be redesigned. If the architect designed them wrong, we better not have to pay a second time. No, around there's no pay. Do that. There's no extra money. No extra it's all money. set. The, the, the drawings are complete now. Okay, and it didn't cost us any more. No more. Okay, good. So we shouldn't. Now with his mistake, he should know better. Okay. Do we move on to the management letter now? Yep. Yeah. Thanks, Phil. Thank you, Phil. Appreciate it. Thanks, Ed. All right. We're in five. Mm -hmm. Take five. Sure. You can take five. Uh, John, can we take two minutes, please? No. Thanks. All right. So. Um, all right, next on our agenda is um, yearly we, we, the Board of Selectmen, uh, and, and the Finance Committee review the management letter that came uh, to the town from our auditors. Uh, but we also, we, the Board of Selectmen, have to vote to accept it. 
right, Marlene? Is that yes? That, that is correct. correct. So um, certainly, we can review it and discuss um, discuss it, uh, which is what we want to do. But uh, ultimately, either to start or or at the end of our conversation, the board of selectmen will have to vote to accept accept the audit report or the management letter. So the management letter comes to us uh, yearly from um, the, our accounting group that uh, does the work for us, um, Roselli Clark and Associates out of Wilmer, Massachusetts. So uh, they, they give us a large document and then a summation, basically, I guess for lack of a better term, uh, with an overview of, of what they've discussed in the, um, in, in the audit itself. And it comes along with recommendations and suggestions and uh, best practices and ways forward and um, in some instances very strong suggestions as to how things should probably be handled on a go forward basis. So uh, you know it's the management letter, the, the, the overview is about nine pages, the document itself is uh, 57. <laughs> 57. So, I don't know if if anyone on the finance committee or board of selectmen had anything in particular you wanted to discuss, um, either in depth or at, at a highlight. Um, I will read the first uh, paragraph of the overview, which probably sums up uh, for any of you who have been watching this meeting tonight or for the last uh, few weeks. Um, the town continues to struggle to address the issues that have plagued it for at least the last decade. As many aspects of the financial operations continue to operate at an unacceptable level. To gain a better perspective on this assertion, we encourage you to read management letters from 2013 to 2015 in conjunction with the observations included herein. Uh, and it goes on to talk about bank reconciliations. See you. Thanks. Good luck. Um, it talks about bank re reconciliations not being done um, in a timely fashion between the treasurer's office and the accountant's office. Um, talks about ledgers um, being misbooked, um, cash books not having the proper entries. Um, and it does talk about a lack of resources has caused the treasurer collector offices to be overwhelmed in many of the aspects of the jobs that need to be completed on a daily basis. Um, being new to the treasury office, there was, um, excuse me, I'm sorry, uh, a learning curve. Um, town could, should consider adding additional resources to this office so the treasurer collector can focus on increasing her efficiency. That has happened, by the way. Um, Additional resources have been added to that office. Um, those deficiencies have a domino impact for the accounting office, as you can imagine, because the accountant relies on the information that comes to him from the treasurer and the collector's office. Um, town accountant in time will become a valuable asset, um, but and is trying to improve every day. Um, we need the two offices operating efficiently. Well, the town's immediate attention to the above matters is of urgent importance. Um, I think that we as a board and as a finance committee, uh, again, we've increased the resources to the treasurer collector office. We've increased resources via a consultant and additional um, personnel here in town hall for the town accountant. Um, they're still playing, it's not an excuse, it's a reality, it's still playing catch up as we're having our conversation about the books of 2017. So um, that's a very high level overview. You know, I training came up uh, throughout this entire booklet that we received, uh, more training for both. Um, but training, as important as it is, given the nature of their positions, and the circumstances we're under in trying to resolve some of these issues, past and current, um, doesn't leave much time to be out of the office to attend training. So, so they, they both have received, uh, the treasurer and the accountant have received some of the training um, via the consultant we have hired. Um, but there, there's no doubt that we need to, uh, the, the financial management of this community just needs to improve. So um, 
you know, I, I guess that's, for me, those were the comments I just wanted to, to put out there and let the town know. <coughs> we realize there's issues. Um, we are trying to address them and put out fires at the same time, uh, some of which are self-inflicted. Um, but I don't know, um, Cindy or Ed or anybody from the Finance Committee want to make any particular comment or... I, I guess the only thing I would add, you know, it's kind of frustrating because these are these audit letters are kind of repeatedly the same message, and yeah. we seem to be yes. every year. I think we're getting a little bit better, but now I have concerns. It's fiscal year where we haven't closed fiscal year seventeen. We're halfway through eighteen. I'm not very confident that. 18 is going to be closed in a timely manner. Um, I don't, you know, and at some point, you know, I'm kind of hoping the town would, would consider instead of having, uh, you know, and, and Sean alluded to it a little bit, I think it's time that the treasurer position was an appointed position. Um, I don't want it. I think Laura Lee has worked hard at it, and she's doing the best she can and um, I, I do think at some point for our control we need we need that to be an appointed position I think the town would be be better off and I think we've got to look seriously on our practices and they've got they've got to be corrected we, we can't wait much longer you know whether we have to add additional money somehow if we can find it to, to make that possible whether we hire more <coughs> outside resources like we did last year or I don't know I, I think I agree with you on a hundred percent I think we also have to look at possibly contracting out I mean this this report sort of disturbing I would say and I think that's putting it nicely of what's being reported and and I, I, we have a lot of work cut out for us as a board or working with the finance committee to make some changes because we can't live like this. Because I, I went back and looked at a couple of the other reports for the last few years, and you're right, it says the same thing. Mm -hmm. it's, and we're, we're falling into the same slide again because we're being told, oh yeah, we're reconciling, but it's not getting done. And, and there's, there's a battle going on, and it's not a good battle. And it's hurting this town. So um, I, I guess that's putting it nicely from my side right now. And I think it is, oh, go ahead. I think it is time for some creative solutions. I mean, one thing I was considering previously, and who knows, maybe it's something we can't afford or, or maybe we make changes. If the position uh, collector, treasurer, I hate to point those ones out specifically, but let's use those for example, are to still remain elected. Could the salary be adjusted to allow us to have someone else here, um, you know, with uh, a large amount of professional executive experience to sort of oversee that operation? Now, I understand for an ex uh, elected person, they wouldn't necessarily be their direct supervisor, but it would be someone with a true understanding of the complexities of accounting just sort of overseeing all of this and making sure it's happening. Either that or switching to a town management system that you know has someone as a town manager uh, with that level of experience. Well, Justin was trying to do that, and it's not working with the present setup, right? I mean, that was him coming in to be the coach, be the finance director to sort of, uh, and it, it didn't work under our present system. But I, I um, imagine we don't get a lot of his time. I mean, yeah, I, I was thinking of someone who would be here every day essentially uh, the yeah. professional sort of accountant yeah. I mean, accounting person but I mean looking at the treasurer's collector's office is 55 hours that's what the salary entails so I still don't understand if that means it's 11 hours a day five days a week is it six days a week or, or how how the work's being performed because the collector's side is 16 hours so I do agree with you uh, Justin said you needed two and a half people to run that office. To me, that's 40, 40, 20. That's 100 hours. Right now, the office has 55, 35, and 14. That's 104. You got four more hours than what our consultant saying is needed, and, and we still are having trouble in that function. So sh if, if we go to a position of uh, 
appointed and make it 40, 40, 20. Maybe that's what we have to look at or, or think about. And maybe that's, I know Hadley does uh, accounting. They have an outside uh, company. Actually, they have Bay State does the accounting. And I thought, and, I, and I, I'm not sure if I'm correct, I thought when Justin was here, he mentioned to do this town was only 25 hours a week. And that makes me confused on how our workload is going. So I'd like to get confirmation from him. So maybe we need another overview on what we're going to present because this is an ongoing situation and we got to resolve it. Oh, nobody wants to sit here and keep going, talking about it for the next 10 years. I mean, this has been going on for a few years and I do agree, we, we have to do something. Yeah, um, yeah, disappointed is a good word, it, I, but the report itself is scathing. I've gone through this like 50 times and I can't find one good thing in here. Not, not one good thing, everything is, is criticisms, but, um, and you say, do we go ahead and spend the money for someone else? It's like, I don't think we have a choice. You can't keep just hitting your head against the wall. And when we talk about training, I mean, after three years of training, if that hasn't changed things, I mean, is there really all of a sudden going to be a miracle training and it changes things? It's not. And you said, I don't know if we can spend the money. I, in the long run, I don't think we have a choice not to spend it because even if we spend more than we are and get you know, some professional level people in there, we're going to save money in the long run because look what we're running to, into again this year. We're now, what, 18 months behind on the reconciliations again. Um, I think even if it's more, we're going to save money in the long run because it's obviously not working and you just don't keep it in that same thing head against the wall. But um, yeah, it's been a long time and you, you talked about the hours and such and it, you know, I don't think you can put it to hours exactly. You know, because someone can do this much in 25 hours, someone else can do this much in 25 hours, but I just think we, we need a dis different approach even if it costs us more. Mo and you know what, if we don't do that, we're gonna be forced to do it somehow and it's not gonna be us, it's gonna be the DOR doing it, so. And I mean, to be fair, these are, from what I've learned the last few years being on this board, extremely complicated jobs. You know, just sure. totally different than any other job out there because the fact that it's um, a government job. And so I think that, it, and, and I think, you know, town people will be um, concerned at the price level that you have to pay for someone who I think we need to handle this level of work. You know, that, that's a big number, but rightfully so. You know, I mean, you need someone who, well, one would be here, and, and that's no, I, I feel like that was a dig against Derek, but tonight was a big night. We were talking about a lot of things that we were like, well, I don't know, I don't know. You know, I mean, so I want someone who's really giving it 100% and being compensated fairly for that. If, 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 if I we may, go that route. If, well, if, if, if you remember, you guys and people on TV, you know, the multiple boards of selectmen had articles on town floor Yes. to combine the treasurer and collector position and make it appointed. Uh, th the feeling being you could then advertise, and, uh, and this is no slight on anybody either, but the, the reasoning for it, because this, this has been going on for years. Ed was on the board one time or twice, because I've been on it twice. And the, the idea is you would hope that somebody with that financial background is who would apply for it, and, and that's how you would make your decision. Um, I don't, I don't think we shouldn't go forward and, and attempt that once again, but I, I will say <coughs> that the, the, the pushback has always been from some that the Board of Selectmen is looking to wield their power and hire somebody to be under them. And uh, quite honestly, nothing could be further from the truth. As a member of the Board of Selectmen, I hope my colleagues would agree. No, you can say that's me too, because I that's told okay. you. No, but, but, I, I, but I, hope I told that I, him from the floor, from the other yeah. point of view, that when it was presented, I thought, but I hope my I colleagues the people would, decide. I, but right, but I would hope my colleagues would, would understand now, sitting on this side, that you know, sometimes you've got to make decisions that are ba that are uh, the best for, or what we think are the best for the town as a whole. And and I totally get where people are. No, you're trying to take away our process of election, but you, what's the alternative? And and this again, we've elected uh, treasurers and collectors through the years. So this this is nothing new. This isn't about any particular personnel. <laughs> it's the reality of the department of local services, which is part of the state, 
that's their recommendation. That, that's that been the reason boards of selectmen have brought it forward. And, you know, and, again, and people, and we do it again, and people can still vote yay or nay. That's because it's town and government. I, you and know? I'd love to see that explained when it does come up right. uh, on, on town floor to vote on that because all it came up was before, oh, we're going to vote on this to do this, and there was no explanation. And for, if people are watching the meetings, they know what the financial situation is. Mm -hmm. If they're not, they go, oh, why are they going to do that? And right. I can say that. So it needs to be explained that it's not working right now the way it is. Yeah. Uh, Ed had a question. Yes, my suggestion, I agree with you 100%, Brian, because I was there with you many times. We tried to do that presentation. But what we didn't do, and I think should be done right now, it is not sugarcoat anything over, bring it public, make the report, the full report, accessible to all the people in town that come to town meeting, let them have the whole report, let them read it, they can see exactly what's going on in the treasurer's office, and the accounting office, and the treasurer's office is, is the problem here, because that's where it's recognized in the report, and the way it, people are treated, they're unhappy with that, if it's an appointed position, you guys can control it and fire them and hire somebody new if they're not doing their job. That's the advantage of it. It's governed by law. That position is governed by law. It's not governed by the Board of Selectmen. The Massachusetts General Law says how it's going to operate. It has to operate within the law. So it has nothing to do with you know, the, the selectmen controlling it. It doesn't, oh, it I, doesn't work that way. I, and I, I understand that. So okay. the townspeople have to understand yeah. that, though, in order for this to pass, it's in the best interest of the town to get that in a, an appointed position as soon as possible. Because there's many things in that report that are very disturbing. And if they read that report, they're going to say, what the heck is going on in this town? Okay, like the DOR and everybody else is saying right now. But... Maybe more people, they see this on TV, they'll come and ask for that report. It's all public record, it's there, and let them read it. That's the bottom line. Yeah, I Darryl? Was, I was just going to say, yes, it does point out deficiencies in the treasurer's office, but it also points out deficiencies in the accounting office, yes. too. So I am careful to divide the, you know, the, you know the blame and you know. I didn't say just the treasurer. Right? Okay. The elected positions, moreover, have to come from the town. So when there's an elected position, you're limiting yourself to just the applicants within the town. Yeah, to have it's a pretty a, small pool. It's a pretty small pool here in Hatfield. So in a point right. position, you're wide open to select a professional to come in. That's what I think. Right. Yeah. I, and, and I would just. Uh, not so much to clarify, but just to, to make a comment on. So when we talked about the collector hours and the um, treasurer hours, and they add up to whatever they add, you know, 55. The, well, the reasoning for that is because they're two separate positions right now. It, they just happen to be held by one person. So Chris had his hand up longer, Bobby. Okay, so uh, first, I, just touching on what Ed talked about, we need this up on the web, this management letter. Can we get that up tomorrow? Can this be, it's a PDF? Yep. Marlene, can we get this up? So everybody who wants to read this can get it? That's one. Two. We'll um, get it up. I don't know if it'll be by tomorrow morning. Well, but as I, soon as you can. Yeah. Okay. I just want to speak a little bit to a situation that occurred in the assessor's office while I was there. In FY09. Chris, uh, does it I have to anything about, to do with what our conversation is right now? Hold on. It's a learning curve. What we found is that as a small town, we have a problem uh, with, it, with training people that are in important positions, like an, ass, uh, an, an assistant assessor who has to do values and so on. Same kind of level of professionalism you're looking for in a treasurer or an accountant or whatever. The problem is, is that once we get these people trained, they're going to go and get a job in a bigger town with bigger pay. And so what we discovered over my 16 years as an assessor is that the, the definition of insanity. Do the same thing over and over and expect different results. You don't get that. What you have to figure out is a whole different creative approach. Ed touched on it. Privatize this thing. Okay, that's the answer. That's what we did with Patriot Properties, 
It has worked like a charm since FY10. We have, a, it, you don't have a problem setting the tax rate ever, have you, since 2010? No, because you have a professional service that's going out there and doing the work under contract and at two-thirds the cost of paying for an assistant assessment. Yeah. Well, all options are going to be on the table. There you go. Like, all options will be on the table right. as we move forward with our financial Before we Mike. get too, too much into the details of trying to solve these problems, I, I very much concur that this management letter, particularly the overview part, should be made public to the community. And, and, and to entice people or to motivate people to, to look at this letter. Uh, because, you know, I've heard adjectives like disappointing and disconcerting and, yeah. and scathing and, and I, I look at it and I would add chastising for that matter. <laughs> Um, I mean, and I just want to read the last two paragraphs, small paragraphs of this to maybe whet people's appetite to, so that they can ascertain just the, the concerns here that the auditor has. And obviously this report has been shared with the Department of Revenue. The town's immediate attention to the above matters is of urgent importance. At this point, the town is unable to produce accurate and timely records that can justify that they are properly safeguarding the assets of this community and we urge town officials to act accordingly. Should the town continue down this path, it could result in major errors that may have a significant adverse impact on the health of the town's finances and cause mandates from the Department of Revenue. I, I think, you know, that's... We're living one of those mandates Those are the right last now. two paragraphs that are in the overview portion of this report uh, as authored by an independent accounting firm. Uh, you know, some of the details that they have discovered in here, particularly over the course of the last 12 to 15 months, in looking at fiscal 16, not 17 and 18, are, are just absolutely disconcerting, to say the least. Um, and I think people should first understand the problems that exist here and the sense of, of urgency that, that not only the, the independent accounting firm is suggesting that we, we, we utilize and, and undertake. But I have a suspicion the DOR is going to talk to you guys about it on Tuesday. Uh, and I, I can only imagine you know, what other mandates they might be thinking about. Uh, if we don't correct the problems that we've got in here systemically. So, you know, before we start talking about solutions, I think there are systemic problems here, some of which may be systematic, some, some of which may be uh, personnel related, some of which may be uh, Combination. A, a team cooperation kind of thing, some of which, which may be training related, uh, but they certainly sound as though they evolve around competencies. Uh, at this point in time, and, and it, it's, it's something that, that people have got to help you guys address. And I think if you can bring these things to the attention of the community, they're going to support whatever your plans are to address this at town meeting. Uh, I, I think people who've had these kinds of feelings in the past about an elected position may very well change their, their their views when they see and hear about some of the numbers that are in this report and the fact that that cash levels don't balance, there are ledgers that don't balance from 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 a, from a, a, a an internal record keeping book to a bank. There's 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 ledgers that don't balance between the the bank's cash ba balance and our general ledger. There are uh, entries that have been forced so that to make things balance. And on top of all that they've been shared with the Department of Revenue uh, and pointed out by this independent accounting firm that they've been shared with the Department of Revenue. No, no, matter, no wonder they want to meet with you guys. It's like, hey, uh, you're giving us numbers. We've translated them, just so happens, into a $305,000 deficit for fiscal 17. But now we've got an auditing firm that's telling us that, whoa, uh, you know, there are some major issues, and we even question the numbers that you've provided us. So, you know, adding more resources to an already, you know, existing issue and problem is like spending good money after bad. 
the systemic issues are here, and I think they've got to be addressed. And they've been uh, identified. Yeah. And, 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 you know, um, and, and, part, and I don't disagree with any of these. I mean, how, how can anybody disagree with it, right? I just want to You're be stating fact. No, so but I, I guess. My, watching would hear this, but but this but I, I right, and, and I guess the only thing I would I would add to that is it, is I agree that you don't want to throw good money after bad. Um, what we have done is tried to take um, actions, increasing some office staff, uh, bringing in the consultants. So I, I, I'm just saying that so people don't think we haven't attempted to do anything, but now it's time to maybe go to the next step of, of yeah. looking at options. Yeah. I mean, it's like any supervisor, you want to make sure that, you know, before you take a drastic step, you've given your team all of the resources they asked. And I think that's where we were at the end of last year. We were like, we recognized the problem and we were like, well, what do you need? And, and essentially it was more help and more money. And so we, we gave a lot more help and a lot more money, and I think we've seen the result, and it just hasn't been quite what we wanted. I, what struck me in this, and, and I mean, you pretty much touched on it, so it's just real brief, is how they had to specifically in this letter say, in layperson terms, our opinion excludes an opinion on the accuracy of all of the town's outstanding receivable balances. And these are the people doing the audit, saying, we just want to let you know that we're not standing behind this, essentially. Right. Right. You know, and so I think that that's a big concern. Yeah. Most, yeah. most of them don't. Most, most, most audit reports will state something very, very similar to that. Bobby, you wanted to say uh, something? One thing, and this goes back now, probably, Carol, you'll remember, I know you were on the finance committee at the time, three or four town meetings ago. We keep talking about the treasurer's position and the collector's position, and the same thing with the clerk's position. And every time we talk about it, we talk about ours. And it goes back to, these are elected officials. It was made very clear that there are no hours. And this is another point that goes back to in terms of an accountability. And that's probably a good word that comes out of this report, is to go to the townspeople and say, if you want accountability, to make it a point of view. You, you can't even say, technically, the person could not show up. And there's no accountability other than recall or other things like that. Whereas with an appointed position, you have that. You know, and, and this this has been brought up at town meeting after town meeting after town meeting, and we talk about pay rate and we talk about hours and all that. There are no hours by state law for any elected position. And if they're elected positions, they can be whatever they are. So even though we have an appearance of 16 hours or 35 hours or whatever they may be, that's just a fictitious number. It, it really has no meaning at all. So that's that's the other thing to kind of keep in mind with all this discussion. A step we could take if we, as we prepare for town meeting, and doing some research before this meeting, I was reviewing Hadley's process, and they provide a very detailed sort of report each year. I guess it maybe comes from the Finance Committee or the Select Board that really talks about every aspect of the money, probably far more than I'd necessarily want us to do. But it also gives some opinions throughout. And maybe we need to send something out to town folks that say, you know, we include this report probably, outlines our overall concerns, of, you know, sy systemic concerns, and these are the recommendations that will be presented at town meeting, supported by the, recommended by the Finance Committee, recommended by the Board of Selectmen, versus just when you get to town meeting, it says recommended, but no one's really had a time to process all of this information. So that's a step we could, an active step we could take this year in advance of town meeting. If it, I don't know if it's legal, you know, all this town government stuff, maybe we well, can't express it, an opinion. It, it, it sounds like it's a <laughs> summation, it sounds like it's a summation or, or an overview of the particular articles that are gonna be on the town meeting warrant. I mean, that's what it sounds like. I, I haven't seen it. The in the past has given a letter to the townspeople. Yeah. We could do that again. Sure. On the budget for 2019. Yeah. But you might want to consider something at a different level. And you know, the, there's one team that you've already have formed, that's the financial team, and they're dealing with the day-to-day -day operations, and they're trying to catch up and reconcile and get things caught up. But, but you know, that team and you guys who are all volunteers, thank God uh, for you. But you know, it's almost impossible for for you and us as a community to come up with solutions here 
the, and really think them through and, and, and recommend a plan of action that's going to address this. And so maybe what, what we need to do as a community is to have or establish some sort of a strategic finance team. Maybe there's three or four people who, who are not members of the they are not. existing operate. Well, you, you, I, know, I mean, I know what you're saying. Potentially, you could right. have one member of the right. board of selectmen, one member of the finance committee. Uh, you know, uh, you know, a, a person like Sandy Belden. Um, I don't. I'm not putting Sandy out there, but you know, people who have that level of financial background, background and expertise, and and who live in the community and who can come together and blue sky about what this community should do with this issue. Because, because I think one of the reasons why it hasn't been addressed sufficiently over the years is that it, it's, it's hard to do that as volunteers at an operational level. Um, uh, you know, and so you could then have that group make recommendations to the Finance Committee and to the Board between now and town meeting, and then at town meeting, you know, you come before the community and say, okay, you know, we've, this is what we're, our plan is. Uh, and this is what it's going to cost. Uh, but we're also thinking that it may generate some revenue, too, by dealing with some of these issues that we have. So, you know, don't get too concerned about the cost necessarily, because there may be a substantial cost benefit to it. But I think that's what we need to do. Yeah. I, I, that's just my... Or if it turns out to be a, a financial company that oversees it, they would probably that would probably be part of their process. I would yeah. think. Yeah. I would think so. Go ahead, Ed. And the other we'll... thing that comes into play here is not only that, but when the auditor does his audit, he's only picking at some of the areas. Okay, he's not picking on everything. I know if you sit down and go over the second selectman's warrant, what I did for many many years. Okay and look at that warrant as it comes in, because you guys got to sign it, and you guys got to authorize the payment of that. And when I used to sit there, and I used to pick out the departments that used to put in double billings, they put all kinds of stuff that vendors, that I would pick up and send it back to the department. They're not even picking up that, because that's a small potato, but when you really add it all up, who knows how much money we're sending back to vendors twice, and they're not sending it back and say, hey, you overpaid us. They're just keeping that money. And you don't you don't even realize it, okay? Um, there's a lot of auditing that needs to be done. That's why I asked, you know, if, if they're going to do a complete audit and look at every line item and everything that's being done in a town, not just one little piece of it, but the whole thing. And I think you'll find a lot of areas that need to be revamped. And that's just from my experience in the last 12 years of, of being on a board. Stuff that comes through every week. Sharon, and then we'll so, move on. So just a couple things from the person who works in the treasurer collector's <laughs> office. Um, so there's a lot of, you know, talk about the job that I already do. I'm new to, I live in town, but new to this position, so just a couple clarifying things. One was for Sean, was that Derek and Laura Lee weren't here. They only were notified about this, meaning their request to be here within the last day or two. And I talked to both of them today, and they both wish they could have been here. So they both asked me to say that today. Um, was that they do think they do take this seriously. It wasn't just, it was an oversight for them to know about it. Um, so that was part of their concern. Um, they going, when we go look at this position, I do know from everything that I keep hearing in the classes that I've started to take, that the state really wants to keep them combined. Whether we stay elected or whether we go to a hired position, okay. they want, the point, thank you, Ed. They really want the positions to be co combined, and most towns are doing that. So just know that that's going to get mandated at some point. We have two people who keep, one person who holds both positions at the time, but long term they're going to say they want one person, whether we have two or not. You know, they're, that's the direction they're going in. Um, and, and to your point about election being versus, you know, we can't control the hours. It's similar being salary. You just need to get the work done, and but you still don't have control over that. And I think that's, you know, big picture, you know, and, and my last comment would be, as someone who is younger in town, that I think I've gone to town meeting and not understood everything that's on the paperwork. And so I kind of looked to others to try to get advice, but that's why if you guys did send something out ahead of time, I think, you know, I don't want to say bad things about kids my age, but it's true, we don't know as much about it yet. So if there was more information to read up and study about ahead of time, you'd be more educated going into it, from my point of view. So. 
you know, I definitely appreciate all the time everybody's putting into this. You know, I've lived here, my family's lived here. I really, you know, devoted to this and committed to helping <coughs> however I can. So, so thanks, Brian. For thank, you. No, thank you. Thank you. No, thanks, Sharon. Thank you. Like to get your perspective. Okay. Okay. Till we meet again. <laughs> yeah. Do we need a motion? Does that mean you're waiting? <laughs> Uh, so the, actually, the selectmen just need a motion to um, to accept, actually to accept it. Um, so I'll, I'll just make a motion that um, the board, uh, on behalf of the town and a half, should accept the management letter year ended date June 30th, 2016. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? I'd love to, but I know it'd be for an hour now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come, come back to our, yes. All those in favor? Hi. Um, thank you, guys, yep. as always. Um, sorry to keep you here so late, but no problem. It's a, good talk. It's okay. Well, and, and our hope is that the 2017 audit report <coughs> will show some improvement. I'm not putting money yeah, on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Um, so. Uh, no, I don't. Did, well, um, Marlene, mm -hmm. what was topic number 12? The, the contracted, is that something? Oh, just a reminder, yeah, there's oh. three. There's the police chief, uh, town administrator, and DPW director. Um, and oh, just, okay, so do you so just kind of remind you those, of that? Right, I had mentioned it uh, previously at a previous meeting. And um, those contracts expire June 30th. Okay, end of so the fiscal year. So it's right. So, so, all so right. depending, so we'll just usually to... do it simultaneously with developing the budget. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Sounds good. And did uh, did oh, you sorry. include seven and six? And oh, did I that, did, did I go out of seven? order again? Topic seven and oh, six. Oh, right, seven. Sorry, Cindy. So we just re the board just uh, approved the audit report. Right. right. So we approved. So we did. Right. So uh, then there's the we did, we did five and say we need to do. Number seven, which is uh, review the financial policies and vote to adopt the policies. So this was what we had. Um, we have brought this up at a previous assistance meeting. with right. On, um, we received assistance from um, part of the community compact, right? The division right, of local, division services, of local services, services had put this together for us. It was a grant. Um, yep. Right, and this was the end result right. of, of that. And it was to um, review our current financial policies and then expand <coughs> upon them. Right. Um, and, and that's what they did. That it's a rather detailed report. So it's 85 pages. Um, I'll be perfectly honest, since we got our packets, I got my packet um, last evening. I haven't had a chance to go through this with a fine tooth comb yet. So I don't know what my colleagues feel if, if I, I, I mean, I, I went through it and I made a couple of notes. Uh, it affects not only the Board of Selectmen, but other departments right. as, as, a, as a way of doing business. So I don't know if, if, if you guys want to discuss certain sections or if you want to table it to our next meeting um, or just accept it as a whole and then we'll uh, break it down I'd later. I'd like to table it. I got it this morning and I've been through part of it but okay, not so. well because it's been So we did begin this. reviewing this yeah, we did um, a, a couple few. months ago. Yes, the introduction, so we identified, reviewed um, uh, recommendations where we need to adopt bylaws or revise right. existing okay, bylaws. Yeah. So we will do me. that. Um, well, can we do this like our other stuff, take a, take a part, one well, part? Well, that's what I had suggested yeah. to Brian, depending on how the board idea. wants to handle it, take a section at a time or section. That's depending, a good idea. right. Because um, I know I, the ambulance side of the house, uh, the fire chief was happy with that section. So uh, for what was it in there? I guess he wrote some of that. But yeah, whatever. You want to take a section or two and, and then it gets done because there's not that many sections in there. Okay. You want, you want to tell us what section for next time? Yeah, um, well, the first section is capital planning. Okay. So Marlene, are you okay if we don't really take this up till? next meeting the first time um, or did you want to get moving on some of this well i am eager to to, to implement, start reviewing implement this. some of these things yeah right. i get it um but i understand though if you haven't had a chance to um well i, I went through part, part of, of it yeah. yeah 
But. So the parts I read basically, as you said, were, were sort of, um, they took upon what we already had and then built upon it uh, right. kind of to mm -hmm. bring it up to date and into the year 2018, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, it explains what capital planning's all about, right. the policies. Um, and, and if I could just state yeah. regarding the uh, section on capital planning in here, yeah. Um, I've been making notes, so really we need to take this and and compare it to the capital planning bylaw that we have, okay. and perhaps update the bylaw. Okay, this one says Based twenty-five, on and the capital planning I think is only five. This one's h higher amount than what the bylaw is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually, yes, I think you're right. I think the bylaw might be ten, whatever it is. The, the numbers have changed. Yeah, the so. numbers have changed. Mm -hmm. So I think Ed referring to Section A on page yeah. one, the definition yeah. of a capital improvement. So, right. Um, I mean. So what I should do is. And then we talked copy. about the closeouts, or we talked about that in our previous discussions of 2017. Um, right. That but, should be happening every year. Yes, right. it should. So, um, but but that's nothing new. That's that. Right. So. So is the is the thought going forward with this document? for example, to say, okay, we're all good with the, the couple of pages as it refers to capital planning, uh, and, and Marlene will compare that to mm -hmm. the town's bylaw of capital planning, and we'll just meld the two. Is that, is that what you're looking for? Yes. So do you want a... That's um, fine. Is, is that okay with you? Yeah, say that again. I think I am, but I don't... I didn't well, so, so I, I guess what I was looking to Mar for you guys and Marlene was just to say, you know, should we approve the capital planning section as as presented as, as part of this overall document, but in the meantime, we will also compare our actual town of Hatfield bylaw for capital planning and, and compare it to this. You, you know what I mean? So, I know, so yeah, really, I this is like another one of, <laughs> yeah. Well, this is sort of a, I, I believe this is another, we've accepted this. It doesn't necessarily mean we're going to implement every single word that's in here verbatim. Is that fair to say, Marlene? Well, or what what i'm i'm asking if if you for example the policy has to, should be adopted by the board so if you're right. adopting it then unless you want to make changes or or edits to so this. do you want to adopt sections then in the meantime like we're doing with the human resource as ed right. alluded to right right rather than the whole, rather than the document right you as do a whole you adopt you point. adopt each section okay if you look at each section, yep. it has at the bottom of yep. the policy to insert the effective <coughs> date the policy was adopted. Right. Could, could we maybe, like the, the whole financial planning um, section, like the top third, how about if we go over that and discuss that one next week? Would that be, we'd get through it faster if we do that much? Would that be all I'm, right? I'm, I'm good with that. Because I'd like I, to read I, I don't it know all if Mark, better, yeah. you know. Mark, that okay with you? Mm -hmm. and then we'll the get entire, at least that much. So all of financial planning so how about if we review put this that. one on? Yeah, one through mm -hmm. 19, 20, okay. one, one through 21, maybe, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then we'll review that one next, it's a good next idea. meeting. And that way it won't take forever, but, you know, just do it in a couple of big chunks. I'm okay with that. Ed, are you okay with that? That's so what, right. what we'll do is that at our next meeting we'll go over this first section, okay. which, which is financial planning. We'll review that and either make changes or adopt it, and then that third of the oh. of the um, report has been accepted or approved. Okay, all right. Thank you, Marlene. Sorry, we sure. weren't ready to. No, I I, I guess the... I misunderstood what you were. Um... Well, and and that's true. The board can just after reviewing the financial planning just vote to adopt all of those and. At yeah. one time. Sure. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. I know it's, it's delaying mm -hmm. what you were looking for a couple of weeks probably, but. There was a lot of reading today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this one. Yeah. Well, this is part of our, part of our paperless environment. We received this in October. I finished at 3.30 this afternoon. And, yeah. and we've, okay. we've had it for a while. All right. So. Thank okay. you. So, so we'll plan on coming back with that top third at our next meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Did I miss anything else? <laughs> Jumping around. Okay. So, um, is there any unanticipated new business that can't wait till our next meeting? They can't wait 
Can I just ask a question? It won't take long. Um, did you, were you advised of the town vehicle accident? Yes. In a timely manner? Mm-hmm. You were? Okay. All right. Yep. That's all I wanted to know. Uh, anything else? Mm -mm. Okay. That was about as easy, quick as I could do it. Perfect. So. Thank you. All right. So, John, just for your um, for your information, so the board will be going into uh, executive session under Mass General Law, Chapter Thirty A, Section Twenty One, Subsection A, Number Two, um, to go into executive session. Uh, that's regarding um, contractual services uh, with one of our um, employees. So. We need, and we will not be returning to regular session. So we're going to do a roll call vote um, of each of the board members uh, asking to go into executive session and not return to open session. So we'll close out our meeting while we're in executive session. So uh, I'll, do, uh, I'll make a motion to go into uh, executive session and not return to public session um, for the mass general I just read to... Uh, Contract negotiations. Moriarty, aye. Jaworski, Jaworski aye. Doty. One question. Yep. Are we gonna, there's two listed. Yeah. Both of them. Right. Yep. Because you said just you, one. You okay. Reference those. Oh, you want me to reference both right. of them? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, in Mass yeah. General, I'm sorry. I just figured we needed one to get in there. Mass General Law, Chapter 38, Section 21, um, Item Number Five. So we we have two different executive <coughs> session um, items. meetings items. Thank you. Okay. So Moriarty was aye, Jaworski's aye, aye. Jody, aye. aye. So John, thank you very much. Another long night. Um, thank you, townspeople. Thank you.